Chapter 3880 One malevolent spirit possession Silver Moon City's lord had come with hundreds of thousands of experts. Seeing Long Chen inside the egg, he smiled sinisterly. Animus truly meet often. Ignorant brat, you'll finally pay the price for your ignorance. Even if you found the treasure, you'll only end up offering it to others. The city lord's figure swayed, and he suddenly shot at Long Chen. Old fellow, if you want to touch my boss, you'll have to get past me first. Guo Ran appeared in front of the city lord, wielding his dual sabers. HMPH, a mantis trying to stop a chariot. You don't know your own power. The city lord sneered as he slowly extended his hand. A gleaming silver sword materialized within his grasp. With a swift yet deliberate motion, he raised the sword high above his head, causing divine radiance to erupt from its blade. After that, he slashed it at Kyo Ran. As he launched his attack, a powerful manifestation burst into existence, taking the form of a silver crescent moon that arched forward like a hook. The glow emanating from it should have carried an aura of holiness and sacredness, yet an explicable sinister aura tainted it. Oot! Yul Ran's dual sabers clashed directly with the city lord's sword, resulting in an explosive collision. A dazzling mix of silver divine radiance and golden blood kai then burst forth from the impact. The city lord's body trembled involuntarily as he was affected by the force of the collision. On the other hand, Guo Ran was hurtled backward into the distance. The space behind rippled as he passed through it, indicating the terrifying force that had struck him. Despite the tremendous impact, the city lord was shocked to see Guo Ran remain unscathed. He didn't even cough up a drop of blood. However, deep inside, Guo Ran was not in a good state. The forceful strike had thrown his blood kai into chaos and he found himself unable to gather his power again. That was a very dangerous state, as he needed to quickly regain control of his body. That attack was truly terrifying. Interesting. A weak person who somehow manages to control power a thousand times beyond their capabilities. But so what? You are still a mantis futilely trying to stop a chariot. Only death awaits you, sneered the city lord. Big words. You, a divine venerate, have lived tens of thousands of years longer than I have, but you still have the face to brag about bullying a youngster. Your face is thicker than Silver Moon City's walls, retorted Guo Ran. Guo Ran was both shocked and infuriated by the city lord's mocking words. His dragon blood energy was as vast as a sea, and his power could topple the heavens. However, he was in a miserable state right now. The majority of his combat power resided within his battle armor, so the sudden surge of his bloodline power actually rendered his once ideal battle armor inadequate. After all, the runes inscribed in his armor were adjusted to his previous power level and couldn't swiftly keep up with such an increase in power. As a result, he found himself unable to use his battle armor properly. His battle armor had been like perfectly fitting shoes. But now that his feet were too big, his battle armor couldn't match his requirements anymore. He would have to inscribe new runes so that the two were a good match once again. The current Guo Ran was like running barefoot. Perhaps such a thing wouldn't be a problem for others, but to Guo Ran who was used to wearing his perfect shoes, it was not a good situation to be in. If Guo Ran could get some time to adjust his armor, he would definitely be much stronger, and wouldn't need to care about this city lord. Most infuriating to Guo Ran, however, was the audacity of this city lord. The latter had lived for so many years, but had the gall to put on arrogant airs in front of him. The city lord seethed with anger at Guo Ran's words, unable to deny the truth behind them. As the lord of Silver Moon City, he had indeed lived for countless years and boasted a cultivation based two major realms above Guo Ran's. Thus, he had no qualifications to mock Guo Ran. In the same realm, 
he wouldn't have been a match for Guo Ran. All you do is spout empty words. Die. The city lord stepped forward, shooting toward Guo Ran like a bolt of silver lightning, not giving him a chance to recover. Boom. However, just as his silver sword was about to strike Guo Ran, a large runic shield appeared in front of him. As a result, the attack only caused that shield to shatter. A scholarly man then appeared in front of him. Xia Chen had rushed over and blocked the city lord's attack. When the runic shield shattered, it erupted like a beautiful firework, sending silver light into the sky. The city lord's pupils constricted in astonishment. Xia Chen had dissipated his power into the sky without receiving even a bit of backlash. Such a marvelous technique was unlike everything he had ever witnessed throughout his long years of existence. At this moment, he put away any arrogance he had. Whether it was Guo Ran or Xia Chen, neither was capable of giving him a threatening feeling. But the fact that they could easily block his attacks made him feel wary. Though kill Long Chen, the city lord waved his sword to his people. As soon as he did that, Silver Moon City's hundreds of thousands of experts flooded toward Long Chen. Amongst them were two divine venerates with shocking auras. They were the city lord's left and right hands, and their power was second only to him. The two of them were charging ahead of everyone else. At this moment, two kinds of runes flowed on top of their bodies, and peculiar sounds emanated from their manifestations, reminiscent of the roars of ancient beasts. Seeing this scene, Xia Chen and Guo Ran were greatly shocked. Both of these divine venerates, who had joined the fray, were double supremes with supreme blood and supreme bones. If the two of them were double supremes, then the city lord had to be a double supreme as well. In other words, the current city lord had yet to use his full power, as a result, both Xia Chen and Guo Ran panicked. If they were to stop those two double supremes, no one would be there to stop the city lord. Just as the two of them were at their wit's end, two figures appeared and blocked the two double supremes. It was Lai Kai and Song Minjuan. The two of them had woken up just now and came charging over. Earth energy, malevolent spirit possession, when a giant beast appeared behind each of them, an ominous aura unfurled, accompanied by a low growl that reverberated through the air. It felt as though a bloodthirsty beast had set its sights on its prey. A rod appeared in both of their hands, enhanced by flowing runes on top. When the two beasts were drawn into their rods, the runes unleashed a burst of light. The next moment, with a resounding crash, Lai Kai and Song Minju and smashed the rods at the two double supremes. Seeing this scene, the two double supremes felt as if a death god had locked onto them. With a howl, they also took out their weapons. Boop, boop. Upon collision, both of their weapons exploded and they shot back like shooting stars. They couldn't even receive a single attack from Lai Kai and Song Minju. Profound earth energy. The city lord's expression changed, reflecting a mix of concern and alarm. It was evident that both of his subordinates had suffered a significant injury. At this moment, the silver moon in his manifestation spun. When two different kinds of runes appeared in his manifestation, his aura instantly grew multiple times, becoming violent to the extent of shaking the world. His aura was now several times greater than those two double supremes. Try to receive my attack if you dare. The city lord snorted, his sword slashing through the air again. This time, the power of his sword was condensed to the pinnacle. As a result, a thin cut was left in the void, looking like a blade cutting paper. Xia Chen's expression changed as he realized that he couldn't disperse this attack's power. Unexpectedly, a spear tore through the void, blocking this highly condensed attack. The collision produced a whirlwind of power that blew through this world. A large figure then appeared within this shattered space, 
his bald head illuminating the scattered rooms. When he showed up, his aura was like that of an ancient beast, and his hunter-like eyes were eyeing his prey. The awe-inspiring attack from the city lord was unable to shake his figure. The Dragon Blood Legion's first captain, Gu Yang, is here to exchange a few pointers. Chapter 3882 10,000 Dragons Roar at Heaven and Earth When Gu Yang appeared, he was different from the other Dragon Blood warriors, and it wasn't just because of his astonishing blood kai. His golden scales all had different runes in them. Each of his runes was like an erupting volcano, with violent power exploding out of them. Moreover, his power seemed to be limitless, to the extent that his aura even shocked the city lord. Gu Yang, with just a spear, stopped the city lord, like a mountain blocking the path of a river. Even with the city lord's mighty aura, he was still shaken by Gu Yang. Gu Yang's spear was blocking the city lord's silver sword. Both of their divine weapons creaked as they fought against each other. As a result, sparks and ripples were spreading in every direction. The clash was so intense that Guo Ran and Xia Chen were stunned. When did Gu Yang become so terrifying? Wielding his spear with one hand, he easily stopped the city lord. It seems that Gu Yang ran into his own opportunity during this time, sighed Xia Chen. Gu Yang had always been a power fighter. In the Dragon Blood Legion, other than Long Chen and Wilda, his power was the greatest. Hence, now that he had undergone the baptism of the Dragon Blood and had condensed a heavenly Tao crown, his Dragon Blood battle armor far exceeded other people's. Brothers, you're not suited to solo fights. Leave him to me. Now that the Dragon Blood Legion has gathered again, you have more important tasks to do. Gu Yang turned around and glanced at the two of them, a warm and emotional smile gracing his lips. Everyone was reunited at last. It seemed like an eternity since their last encounter. They had so much to share, yet so little time to do so. All their profound emotions could only be expressed through meaningful gazes. Boss Gu Yang is mighty. We'll leave this to you. Guo Ran laughed and flashed him a thumbs up. Between brothers, there was no need to say so many words. Just a single gaze was enough. Guo Ran and Xia Chen were in charge of commanding the entire Dragon Blood Legion. While Guo Ran served as the general, Xia Chen was the formation master. Their primary strength lay in guiding the Dragon Blood Legion's power, enabling them to unleash their greatest potential. Hence, engaging in individual combat really wasn't their forte, so they directly returned to the Dragonblood Legion's formation. Their objective was to consolidate the Dragonblood Legion's forces and ensure everyone acted as a cohesive unit, tightly bound together like an unyielding rope. Do you think you can block me? Dream on. The city lord seethed with anger, feeling deeply underestimated. His grip on the sword tightened, causing it to quiver. Boot! With an explosive sound, both of them retreated a few steps. No, I'm not going to block you, I'm going to kill you. This year I've gone through trials of blood and fire, through pain that others cannot imagine. It was all for today, so that my power would be able to match my status as the first captain of the Dragon Blood Legion. Boss often said that even going all out, you might not see results. But you cannot be discouraged, because it just means that the time hasn't come yet. On the other hand, if you don't focus on improving yourself because you're waiting for some opportunity, then you won't have the power to grasp that opportunity. You'll only be able to watch as it slips away. That's why I spent day and night cultivating during this time to the point that my master couldn't bear to watch me. My master even thought that I became bedeviled multiple times due to my fanaticism. But I firmly believed that my boss would be right, that my efforts would be repaid. Today, I finally grasped this opportunity and completely transformed. 
as for you you are simply the stepping stone to my return as the first captain of the dragonblood legion said guyang calmly his gaze fixed upon the city lord within his eyes golden runes were flickering representing two distinct dragon marks just keep talking like a madman do you think you can stall for time how absolutely naive the city lord didn't understand what gu yang was saying so with a cold snort the two kinds of runes in his manifestation merged together forming a chain that wrapped itself around his silver moon manifestation as two different currents of power merged the crescent silver moon emitted a blazing light the city lord's aura began to slowly rise like the tide although it wasn't rising very quickly it seemed limitless everyone go all out don't give them any chance to breathe shouted the city lord he once more attacked gu yang with his silver sword you're the naive one in the ten thousand dragon devil mess i experienced the pain of ten thousand dragons devouring my soul tempering my spirit within the ten thousand dragon pool i experienced the pain of ten thousand dragons digging into my heart tempering my body i brushed against death multiple times and all i was lacking was an opportunity now the moment i have been waiting for has arrived i have not only merged with the essence blood of the immemorial dragon king but also its soul essence and undying will today marks my triumphant comeback as the first captain of the dragon blood legion and you merely serve as my first blood if i fail to kill you how can i fit to be the dragon blood legion's first captain how would i have the face to follow my boss gu yang's voice gradually intensified resonating like a mighty dragon cry echoing throughout the nine heavens causing countless people to feel their ears ringing and their heads throbbing as if on the verge of splitting open brothers i gu yang have returned i vow to not let you down any more the history of the martial heaven continent shall not repeat itself i gu yang finally have the power to block the wind and rain for you gu yang's voice quivered with a mixture of anger and sorrow reflecting the profound helplessness caused by the devastating losses on the martial heaven continent the memories of kjining the old man ling yunzi and the other seniors who had fallen one by one weighed heavily on his heart the sacrifices made by his brothers were killing him inside akin to a venomous viper sinking its fangs into his very core it was this pain that had driven him to cultivate like a madman it was masochistic but only by making himself feel pain could he feel a bit of peace he refused to experience the same sense of powerlessness again thus he forced himself to get stronger with every passing moment it was now that the fury in his heart finally had a place to be unleashed ten thousand dragons roar a heaven and earth as bu yang roared his manifestation burst into existence dragons appeared behind him in a ten thousand dragon diagram those ten thousand dragons roared together their dragon cries resounding throughout every corner of heaven and earth his dragon scales trembled with great intensity each one having a rune grow on it upon closer inspection they appeared to be miniature dragons but when gu yang raised his spear again an overwhelming tremor shook the world with unwavering determination his spear stabbed forward backed by the roar of ten thousand dragons at this moment the spear seemed to come from the depths of hell the city lord was horrified to find that he was locked down by this terrifying attack chapter three thousand eight hundred eighty three malevolent spirit devours souls the current gu yang was like a real draconic life form as the image of the ten thousand dragons roared in his manifestation his killing intent erupted his spear then mercilessly stabbed toward the city lord locking him down fully the city lord's cultivation base was two major realms above gu yang's so whether it was in terms of mental energy and spiritual strength he far outclassed bu yang according to reason 
it should be impossible for Gu Yang to lock him down. However, Gu Yang relied on his towering blood kai to suppress heaven and earth, using the most barbaric and unreasonable method to lock the city lord down. Ignorant brat, you dare. At this moment, the city lord was shocked and enraged. As the ruler of Silver Moon City, he had only solidified his position after slaying countless life forms. So, it was his first time being looked down upon by a junior. Without hesitation, he unleashed a surge of silver energy with his sword, clashing with Bu Yang head on. This confrontation was very simple and direct. Boom! As the silver light collided with the golden blood kai, the world underwent a transformation, a wash in a captivating blend of gold and silver hues. The impact of their collision tore the void apart, and waves of energy surged through the heavenly dows, creating ripples that reverberated across the world. What a terrifying physical body! A life form from the dragon mammoth race cried out in shock. It too possessed an incredibly terrifying physical body, but its power could not compare to Gu Yang's. Gu Yang and the city lord clashed and once more retreated. In this exchange, neither of them had any advantage. With a light swing of his sword, the city lord created a blooming sword flower. Like a venomous serpent, his blade lashed out at Gu Yang from every angle. This assault contained a myriad of variations, each strike infused with incredible malevolence. However, Gu Yang didn't even look at this technique, his rumbling spear simply swinging through the air. Borrowing the momentum from their last clash, he smashed it at the city lord's head. Seeing this scene, the city lord was taken aback. Gu Yang was clearly intent on dying along with him. A spear had a greater reach, so even though the city lord had attacked first, Gu Yang's spear would definitely reach him before the sword landed. Knowing that Gu Yang's spear would erupt with formidable force once it struck him, the city lord didn't dare to receive the terrifying attack with his body. As a result, his sword spun through the world, turning from a thrust to a downward slash. With perfect precision, his sword tip struck the point on Gu Yang's spear that was the hardest to control, two-thirds of the way forward. Boop! Overwhelmed by the force, the city lord's sword yielded under the strain, visibly bending, and his body quivered in response. With a grunt, he was blown away. In the end, the city lord still underestimated Gu Yang's attack. He had hoped to resolve Gu Yang's attack with a special technique and then counterattack. However, due to switching from offense to defense so suddenly, he was at a disadvantage. After all, Gu Yang's power was too condensed. Unable to properly disperse it, his power directly invaded the city lord's body through his sword, almost making him cough up blood. While the city lord was enraged, he also felt a burst of fear. Just now, he had thought about taking Gu Yang's attack in order to eliminate him. However, if he had truly done that, he wouldn't have just risked being injured. An attack with such highly concentrated power would have wiped his Yuan spirit out along with his body. If you're so afraid of death, you'll definitely die today. Sai, you don't even believe in yourself. No one can save you, sneered Gu Yang. He then stamped on the air, shooting toward the city lord with his spear in hand. Hearing this, the city lord was incensed. Gu Yang's words were like poison arrows piercing his heart. This evaluation was an insult. Ignorant fool, who do you think you are to dare teach a lesson to me? shouted the city lord. While quivering in rage, his sword danced and thousands of sword images slashed toward Gu Yang. Gu Yang repeatedly blasted apart his attacks. Engaged in an intense fight, the two combatants unleashed torrents of wild kai, causing heaven and earth to tremble as if on the verge of collapse. However, the two of them were relatively evenly matched. Golden blood kai and silver light repeatedly clashed, 
producing rumblings as if the laws of the heavenly dows could not contain their power. This shocking battle left countless onlookers astounded, their jaws dropping in sheer disbelief. An immortal king is fighting a divine venerate, and the latter is a double supreme at that. Amidst the battle between Gu Yang and the city lord, a sudden and thunderous explosion shook the air, seizing everyone's attention. A blood mist then filled the air. Intrigued by the sudden turn of events, they turned toward the source of the commotion and saw a shocking scene. They just barely managed to see an elder being blasted apart by Lai Kai's rod. That elder was the city lord's left hand. After his body was destroyed, his Yuan spirit fled in terror. He had never dreamed that he would encounter such a terrifying youngster here. He had only managed to receive three blows before his physical body was unable to endure. City Lord, save me! Even as he begged for aid, he didn't realize that his respected City Lord was in an intense battle with Bu Yang and had no time to bother with him. Malevolent spirit devours souls, after destroying his physical body, Lai Kai didn't continue to attack, not even raising his rod. Instead, he formed hand seals, and that malevolent spirit figure behind him opened its mouth. That figure was like an ominous devil. When it opened its mouth, it revealed countless sharp teeth. Having lost his physical body, the assistant of the city lord suddenly felt a powerful suction drag him back. Even as he fled, space seemed to retreat and his Yuan spirit was slowly pulled toward a sister mouth. He struggled with all his might, but he was only dragged closer and closer to that mouth, causing him to despair. No, regretfully, all his struggles were useless. He was still sucked into that mouth. Boom! When that mouth closed, everyone saw his Yuan spirit collapse, devoured. The malevolent spirit's mouth then wriggled a bit as if it was chewing. Its crocodile-like eyes actually lit up as if it was enjoying the taste. Save me! Just then, the other assistant to the city lord screamed miserably. He wasn't even done begging for help before he was devoured by the other malevolent spirit. His physical body instantly exploded and blood mist came out of its mouth. His Yuan spirit directly swallowed. At this moment, the left and right hands of the city lord, two double supreme divine venerates, were slain just like that. Everyone was shocked. Were these people all monsters? As for the army of hundreds of thousands of experts that the city lord had brought with him, they were dumbfounded. Their city lord was now blocked by someone, while his two assistants were already slain. Having reached the Dragon Blood Legion, and seeing their murderous gazes, they instantly began to sweat. Since you've come, don't leave. Lai Kai and Song Minju informed hand seals, and the two big, malevolent spirits behind them suddenly exploded, transforming into millions of smaller malevolent spirits that swarmed over the Silver Moon City's army. Chapter 3884 World Extermination Palm Run Someone cried out. When millions of malevolent spirits swarmed over them, sharp pain racked their Yuan spirits. Moreover, they all had a bad feeling. An intense sensation of terror made them instinctively want to flee. Suddenly, heads began to explode. Their Yuan spirits were sucked out by a mysterious force and devoured by those malevolent spirits. Countless bodies crashed to the ground, creating a harrowing scene. However, people noticed that those who perished had weak Yuan spirits. Only people with weak souls had their Yuan spirits forcibly ripped out. Those with powerful Yuan spirits felt pain, but they were not substantially harmed. Don't be afraid. Work together and charge out, shouted one of them. Following his orders, the experts of Silver Moon City gathered. They prepared to charge out of this encirclement. However, the dragonblood warriors didn't chase them. After all, they had to guarantee Long Chen's safety. As long as these experts stopped attacking him, everything was fine. 
Suddenly, the earth exploded and two giant hands reached out of the ground. Each palm depicted an image of a giant, malevolent spirit. World extermination palm. Lai Kai and Song Minjuan shouted in unison, and those giant hands immediately slammed together like swatting a mosquito. No. Swiftly, the two hands covered the sky, leaving the Silver Moon City's experts unable to react as they were crushed. Then the world became silent. Everyone was dumbfounded. Those two hands were like soaring mountains, boundlessly large, giving off an incomparably shocking feeling. People then saw fresh blood slowly pouring out of the two palms. Within the blood, special runes could be seen giving off various energies. That blood, the supreme blood, slowly merged into the earth, dyeing the land red. Everyone was silent, terrified by this attack. Looking at those hands, they shivered uncontrollably. When the hands slowly opened, people only saw some specks on them, but not a single corpse. Hundreds of thousands of experts were slain just like that, leaving behind no corpse or you in spirit. In such a solemn situation, Lai Kai and Song Minjuan suddenly clapped their hands in the air, causing everyone to jump. Just as they thought that the two were preparing some big move again, they realized that it was nothing more than a celebration of their victory. This technique had each of them controlling one hand. Yet, they executed the task perfectly. It was such flawless cooperation. Both of them were earth cultivators and had the same master. As a result, their combination technique was also flawless, stunning everyone. After seeing this scene, anyone else attacking the Dragon Blood Legion fled for their lives. The only ones still fighting were Gu Yang and the City Lord. However, the City Lord was incensed at the moment. He had brought all the elites of Silver Moon City to fight for more primal Chaos Kai, but most of them were dead now. All of you can die. The City Lord let out a powerful roar, causing the Silver Moon in his manifestation to appear on his forehead. He was absorbing the manifestation into his body, resulting in it being enveloped in a radiant silver light. In an instant, his aura surged, doubling in strength, the next moment, he unleashed eighteen sword attacks at once. However, Gu Yang forcibly received all of them and continued to force the city lord back step by step. In the air, both sword Kai and spear images raged ferociously, accompanied by the echoes of dragon cries that shook the sky. The ten thousand dragons in Gu Yang's manifestation seemed to come to life, starting to move. With each motion, Dragon Kai flowed into Gu Yan's body, causing his scales to ripple like the tide. His power then intensified crazily, growing beyond measure. You are the only one who's going to die. Do you want to absorb the surrounding primal chaos Kai to fully merge your supreme blood and supreme bone? Keep dreaming, sneered Gu Yang. The power of ten thousand dragons flowed within his body bestowing him with endless power. His spear danced in the air. The city lord was shocked, never expecting this bald fellow to possess such power. Unbeknownst to him, Gu Yang had cultivated a secret art of the dragon race. As a result, on his own, he had absorbed almost half of that immemorial dragon king's essence blood. Gu Yang had also assimilated fragments of that dragon king's divine abilities. Though incomplete, it was enough to benefit him. With these fragments, he swiftly grasped certain divine abilities that had previously eluded his understanding. Because of the secret art of the dragon race, the essence blood of ten thousand dragons was flowing within Gu Yang's body. He had suffered unimaginable pain to absorb them, but to actually control them was another matter. That was because every dragon had its own will, it was very difficult to merge them all. However, after absorbing the essence blood of the immemorial dragon king with its might, the essence blood of the other dragons could only submit. So, for the first time, 
Gu Yang was capable of controlling the full might of ten thousand dragons. Even the full power attacks of the city lord didn't make him take a single step back. On the other hand, he was suppressing the city lord. The city lord felt like he might explode in rage. He had gone through three treasure lands on his way here and had absorbed a huge amount of primal chaos Kai. If he could absorb the primal chaos source where Long Chen was, he would definitely be able to merge his supreme blood and supreme bone. The city lord had indeed missed the best timing to merge his supreme blood and supreme bone, but that did not mean that it was impossible. Even though he had become a divine venerate, he could still merge the two. The only requirement was an astronomical quantity of primal chaos chi, tens of thousands of times more than what a normal person needed. For this one chance, he had waited tens of thousands of years. But then, on the verge of his success, some hateful bold fellow just had to block his path. This was his final chance, and if he missed it, he would no longer have any chance of merging them in his lifetime. If he couldn't fully merge his supreme blood and supreme bone, he would never be a true double supreme, forever incapable of unleashing the full potential of a double supreme. Thus, he urgently needed more primal chaos Kai but it wasn't just him. All the Supremes in the Three Thousand Worlds wanted to absorb as much of it as possible. Gu Yang perfectly blocked the City Lord. No matter how the City Lord tried, Gu Yang remained steadfast and unyielding. Frustrated, the City Lord could vent his fury through anguished screams. Just as they were fighting, a mocking voice suddenly pierced through the air, and the sky became shrouded by blood-colored clouds. The great lord of Silver Moon City can't even beat a member of the junior generation, someone who still reeks of his mother's milk. What a joke! Children of the blood race teach this inferior human race what true power is. Successive experts emerged from within the blood-colored clouds, descending directly upon the Dragon Blood Legion. Chapter 3885 Circular Slaughter Formation At this moment, a battle chariot whistled through the air. A wizened elder was standing in front of it, overlooking the entire battlefield. He was no taller than five feet, skinny and small like a shriveled chimp. However, his aura was like the great sea of stars. Just by standing there, the world quivered because of his existence. His aura was even stronger than the city lord's. This was a terrifying expert of the blood race. The laws, the ten thousand Daos, swirled around him, as if linking him to all of heaven and earth. The city lord's expression sank in response to his mocking, but he didn't say anything. He just continued fighting Gu Yang, as if he hadn't heard the provocative words. Seeing him not respond, that elder of the blood race was very pleased. On the war chariot, he ordered the millions of blood race experts to crash down on the dragon blood legion. Inferior human race, you are only fit to crawl beneath the mighty blood race. If you don't want to die, then scram, shouted the blood race's elder. Boom! In response to his words, Two giant hands exploded out of the ground, not giving the elder any time to defend himself before being smashed. And the impact caused heaven and earth to tremble. That elder, along with tens of thousands of the blood races' vanguard, were caught within those palms. The hands were closed, yet they continued to quiver as if some immense power was resisting them. This was a competition of power. Explode! A furious howl could be heard from inside. Following that, those two hands exploded into flying bits of earth. When the elder flew out of the grasp of those two hands, everyone saw that he was in a wretched state. He was covered in blood, and that mighty war chariot of his was gone. Idiot! If you didn't detonate your iron blood war chariot, you'd be dead right now. Your foolishness cost you the lives of tens of thousands of your people. As expected, the blood race really is a low-grade race. 
the lord of silver moon city took this chance to mock that elder the two were actually mortal enemies competitors on the same level having fought openly and secretly for countless years in the three thousand worlds both of them had taken countless casualties among them as a result the city lord naturally wouldn't warn him about how powerful these youngsters were seeing the elder be so arrogant as to not even activate his protective divine light the city lord already knew how he would fare the blood races elder was infuriated at his losses those two hands had come too suddenly and his arrogance had clouded his mind making him too overconfident and not prepared for combat if he hadn't detonated this priceless treasure of his he would be dead now only then did the realization dawn upon him as to why the city lord had remained silent in the face of his taunts it was to make him suffer alongside him the more he thought of that the angrier he became ignorant junior you dare to attack the city lord die blood domain ten thousand down merger when the blood race elders manifestation burst into existence a blood-colored domain appeared with two kinds of twisting runic chains unfurling violent power in all directions he was another double supreme divine venerate a blood-colored spear materialized in his grasp and with a great force he stabbed it toward the dragon blood legion the rest of the blood races army followed behind him like a roaring dragon a withered monkey also dares to be so arrogant have a taste of my rod Lykai sneered and stepped forward when he did so the malevolent spirit manifestation behind him roared boo Lykai's body shook intensely as his rod clashed with the incoming spear the impact forced him to stagger backward taking three swift steps also each step resonated with such force that the earth quivered leaving behind giant footprints he was dispersing all that power into the ground beneath his feet and this allowed him to endure less power as for the blood race elder he was startled as his blood kai was flipping inside of him just as he was shocked another rod silently attacked him from behind making his expression change he had no time to turn around so he simply swung his spear behind him and song minjuan appeared and the attack that he had prepared for a long time sent the elder flying the latter smashed toward the ground like a meteorite earth rock art Lykai then formed hand seals and the soft earth instantly began to shine creating a giant millstone which was sleek and glossy like iron with just a look everyone knew that it clearly had shocking hardness just then the elder smashed into its surface with a heaven-shaking explosion that giant millstone shattered and smashed deep into the earth from this it could be seen just how much force the elder had been struck by the elder bounced off the hard millstone in the air he coughed up three mouthfuls of blood perhaps song min juin's attack wouldn't have caused much damage to him if he had simply struck the ground but when he instead struck that solid stone there was nowhere for his momentum to dissipate all of that force simply tore through his body however he was truly worthy of being a mighty expert on the level of a city lord his physical body was frighteningly powerful if it was anyone else they would have been like an egg striking rocks just now not even their bones would have remained again oh, the two giant hands once more appeared upon seeing this the elder's soul almost fled in terror his blood kai was in chaos right now and he was unable to concentrate his power if he was struck by this move again he would definitely die those two hands slammed together but blood kai burst out of the elder's body this time by the skin of his teeth he escaped through a crack he had just escaped when two rods smashed toward him not giving him a chance to recover Lykai and Sam Minjuan repeatedly struck him although the elder fought with all his power he was repeatedly forced back in just a few moves 
he was set flying by a strike to his leg from Lai Kai. Song Minjuan was about to follow up when another member of the blood race charged over, blocking his attack. He was another double supreme divine venerate. He had been leading the blood race's army's assault on Long Chen, but seeing this elder in crisis, he came to save him. However, blocking Song Minjuan's attack caused him to cough up blood and be blown back. Clearly, even amongst double supremes, there were great differences in their power. His power was a far cry from this elder's. The elder finally had a breather. At this point, another three elders came charging over, so now five double supreme divine venerates were closing in on Lai Kai and Song Minjuan. However, Lai Kai and Song Minjuan's cooperation was flawless. Even against all five of them, the two were capable of doing both offense and defense. They came and went as they pleased in control of the tempo of the battle. On the other hand, the five of them might lose their lives if they were unexpectedly struck by one of their attacks. With Lai Kai and Song Minjuan holding back the five of them, the rest of the Blood Race's army was pouncing on the Dragon Blood Legion. Seeing them flooding over, Xia Chen's eyes were filled with blazing battle intent. Brothers, it's time to find that familiar feeling. Get into the circular slaughter formation. Chapter 3886, respectfully sending you on your way, following Xia Chen's orders, over 2,700 dragon blood warriors switched from an absolute defense formation to a killing formation. It was like a closed flower was instantly blooming. Each the inside, the middle, and the outside had nine hundred dragon blood warriors moving back and forth. They were like giant gears spinning, grinding down the blood races experts. The dragon blood warriors moved through the battlefield at high speed. Like spinning saw blades, they tore through their enemies. It was the same formation and the same people as before. However, after undergoing through their new life in the immortal world, these dragonblood warriors were no longer the same. They had experienced trials and pain during this time. Hence their light was sharper, stronger, and more ruthless than ever. They had even more confidence in themselves now. The blood race had been planning on using their number superiority to instantly crush them. But in the blink of an eye, hundreds of them died. In front of the Dragon Blood Legion, they were weaker than sheep and could only be slaughtered. But in just a moment, someone realized that things were different from their expectations. They were simply dying on contact. This offensive formation was sharp and unbreakable, something that they couldn't suppress with mere numbers. Save me. No, I don't want to die. However, just as they wanted to retreat, they found that there was no leaving once they were in. The surrounding space twisted, and the currents outside refused to allow them to escape. Most terrifying of all were the dragon blood warriors. Like three coiling dragons, they dominated this space. Every group of nine hundred dragon blood warriors was its own force, and touching a single one of them was equivalent to touching the combined force of nine hundred dragon blood warriors. That power made their enemies despair. The Blood Race's army could only cry already despairing without any ability to resist at all. They could only watch as they were mercilessly slain. Only the Blood Race experts that had yet to charge into their midst were unaffected by the invisible flows of space. They could flee, but the rest were slain in just a few breaths' time. Millions of experts were crushed in the blink of an eye, and only over a hundred thousand survived. Right now, the blood race's experts were dumbfounded and terrified. Their current enemies were definitely not humans, but rather devils, monsters, or death reapers. After their offensive formation did its part, all the dragon blood warriors, as well as Xia Chen and Guo Ran, were incredibly excited. Their blood was boiling with excitement as they had found again the old feeling of fighting together to their heart's content. 
for over a year they had been fighting for themselves. Now they had all grown stronger, and this newfound strength combined them into a solid, unyielding rope. Even they were amazed and afraid of their new power. The proudest and most emotional of them all was Saya Chen. Just now, he had just divided the Dragon Blood warriors into new groups and subdivisions. He then distributed new runes to them and told them to get accustomed to their new positions and the people beside them. Unfortunately, the blood race's experts immediately came, and they didn't have any time to practice. But in an instant, they could showcase a staggering level of synergy within their newly formed teams. This achievement filled Zaya Chen with an immense sense of pride. Clearly, the Dragon Blood warriors were capable of tacitly working together on a profound level. It was as if this synergy had been branded into their blood and souls. A mere gesture or glance could convey unspoken thoughts among them. This tacit cooperation was something that had been tempered through countless life and death battles on the martial heaven continent. It was something that would never fade away. Just as the dragonblood warriors drove off the blood race's army, countless powerful auras emerged, coming from every direction, signifying the arrival of more city lords. Just based on the auras that they could sense, there were at least dozens of them. Ahaha, ha, the ancestral dragon scale. A little human wishes to consume the ancestral dragon scale. Don't fantasize like that. This treasure isn't something that you can touch. A boisterous laughter echoed from a member of the beast race, his entire body enveloped in scales with eagle-like wings sprouting from his back. Notably, a long pale, several times the length of his body, extended from his hip region. That thin tail was like a whip, but its tip was a silver-gray bone spur that gave off a chilling sharp light. This was a life form that they had not seen before. His body gave off an immemorial aura, and there were countless demonic beasts behind him. The inferior human race thinks they can touch a sacred object. He he, humans really do have the greediest hearts. But you'll have to spit out whatever you swallow. Another commanding voice rang out from an enormous terrifying expert. His bronze skin was covered in runes and his voice was like a drum, capable of shaking people's souls. One expert after another appeared, each possessing auras on par with the Lord of Silver Moon City and the Blood Race's Elder. In fact, some of their auras surpassed the two of them. It was unbelievable that dozens of experts on this level would appear at once. Their attention was drawn toward the immemorial dragon corpses, yet their eyes were ultimately fixated on the dragon scale eggshell enclosing Long Chen. Each of them harbored a fervent desire to possess it. These people all came from different powers and races, but they all knew that their primary objective was to break that golden eggshell around Long Chen. Bastards! Seeing so many terrifying experts appear at once, Gu Yang, Lai Kai, Song Minjuin, and the others hastily pulled back and prepared to face them. How laughable! Seeing this scene, that unknown life form with the long tail sneered. His tail then whipped through the air in a strange arc at Gu Yang, who, with a forceful stomp, Gu Yang created two ripples in the void. The world trembled as a result, and in this exchange, that unknown life form was blown far into the distance by Gu Yang. So the human race actually produced someone on this level. But it means nothing, as I will not give you any chance to grow. All of you will die today. Another powerful expert charged forward, immediately launching a sharp killing blow right at the start. You're the ones who are going to die. Once boss comes out, not one of you will live to escape, roared Gu Yan while stabbing his spear forward. Then, due to just having fought off the other life form, Gu Yang was at a disadvantage here. This time, he was the one blown back. Heaven Earth Spirit shield heaven and earth. All of a sudden, the earth rippled under the command of Lai Kai and Song Minjuin. With great coordination, 
they quickly summoned a thick earthen wall effectively blocking those experts outside oh however that wall was forcibly blown apart they are not going to give us time to strengthen it shouted song minjun before the earth wall's power was fully condensed it was already shattered it couldn't block the attacks of this many experts inferior human race priceless treasures aren't something that you can touch as the earth wall shattered a figure flew through seemingly teleporting right before the dragon blood warriors wearing a fierce smile he swiftly formed hand seals causing blood red light to condense in his hands a horrifying pressure quickly spread from his body infecting the surroundings inferior are you talking about yourself an icy voice rang out at this moment accompanied by a sword that slashed through the air just like that sword kai sliced through this figure from the crown of his head to his crotch cleaving his body in two a subtle quiver coursed through his now divided body his expression contorting into one of sheer terror following that his body slowly fell apart two halves falling to the ground even the light that he had just condensed in his hand was perfectly split in two like a neatly cut up fruit as his body and divine light were impeccably severed in two the true form of a handsome man was revealed on the other side with starry cold eyes he stood resolute his presence exuding an air of icy detachment long tan's subordinate the dragon blood legion's fourth captain yu Zifink, is here to respectfully send you on your way after saying that yu Zifeng stepped forward his sword slashed toward another city lord level expert who had just charged forward chapter three thousand eight hundred eighty seven unrivaled sword cultivator yu Zifeng's arrival instantly revitalized the dragonblood legion he was a peerless sword cultivator even long chen had personally admitted that in terms of pure attack power yu zifen was number one in their legion at this time yu zifen's robes fluttered gently along with his black hair with a sword in his hand he was walking gracefully through the air he appeared the same as back then however his aura had changed it was sharper and fiercer no longer reserved just like an unsheathed sword even the ten thousand dows would be cut apart by his sharpness when his sword fell there were no ripples in the void no awe-inspiring explosions it looked just like a simple sword but it cut apart the laws of the cosmos and shattered the boundaries of space-time people's perception itself even seemed to falter as if heaven and earth had been cut apart leaving their senses disoriented that expert before him cried out in shock sword cultivator every expert wished to avoid facing sword cultivators the most they were the most unfathomable existences with unmatched power as the world's most illogical existence their killing power couldn't be judged by cultivation base and realm furthermore there were huge differences between sword cultivators an ordinary sword cultivator might only count as above average amongst others in the same realm in a clash in the same realm that sword cultivator would only have a higher chance of victory however there were also some absolutely terrifying existences amongst sword cultivators they were able to disregard cultivation bases disregard realm differences and disregard the very boundaries of the heavenly dows they were beyond the suppression of the laws beyond all limitations when that first expert was slain his very technique was sliced along with him leaving countless people horrified Ants, the next target hesitated for but a single moment pondering whether to block or flee when yu Zifeng's sword mercilessly fell that expert took out a giant shield at this critical moment however his shield had just appeared when his body trembled uncontrollably the shield was untouched but he was already cut in two what the countless people were shocked now that person's shield had clearly appeared in front of him so why was he killed while the shield was undamaged 
Could Sword Kai kill people through shields? No, that's the power to sever the laws of space-time. A frightened cry suddenly rang out. Yu Zyphen had indeed not struck that person through the shield. He had first struck that person, and only then did the latter manage to raise this shield. In other words, Yu Zyphen's sword had transcended the limits of space-time. When they saw Yu Zyphen's movements, it was already after he moved. His sword was above the laws. How can there be such a terrifying sword cultivator? People quivered with fear. Even the city lord level experts were afraid. For him to have transcended laws meant that by the time they saw him raise his sword, they would already be cut in half. Yu Zyphen suddenly took a single step, crossing the gap to strike another expert. Even though this expert was already fleeing, when Yu Zyphen's sword fell, this expert's body was still cut in too far in the distance. The trajectory and angle of Yu Zyphen's attack defied common sense, deviating entirely from his physical position. It was like, whenever Yu Zyphen moved his arm, an invisible sword would just fly out and kill his opponent. That strange scene terrified countless people. Sword cultivators were unreasonable, completely illogical. They could not be judged according to the standards of the cultivation world. Yu Zyphen unleashed three blows, killing three people who were double supreme divine venerates. Moreover, they didn't even have the power to retaliate in front of him. Seeing this scene, the dragon blood warriors cheered excitedly. These experts were finally afraid and switched to retreat fleeing like they were avoiding the plague. A man with one sword scared off dozens of double supreme divine venerates. That scene was truly astonishing. Use numbers to crush him. Sword cultivators are completely focused on offense. Defense is his fatal weakness, so even an ordinary person's attack can kill him. Attack, shouted one of them, directing his army of hundreds of thousands. Sword cultivators were indeed terrifying. This was known to all. However, their weakness was also not a secret. Everyone knew that sword cultivators could only attack, not defend. The more terrifying the sword cultivator, the more their focus was on offense. That was what made their attacks like an unblockable heavenly blade. However, the heavenly dows were fair. Such terrifying attack power resulted in a giant pole in their defenses because they sacrificed their defenses for an absolute offense. If they were struck by an attack, they could easily be slain. Hence, in a chaotic battle, if someone could grasp an opening, they could instantly launch a fatal blow. Kill that human brat. All of you, charge. If anyone dares to hold back, I'll kill you myself. Attack. The others also gave frantic orders, sending their disciples charging at the terrifying sword cultivator. Following that, those experts clenched their teeth and poured toward Yu Zyphen, crashing toward him like the tie. Ten thousand swords execute immortals. Yu Zyphen let out a resounding shout. In that instant, he swiftly formed a seal with his left hand, while simultaneously lifting his right hand with the sword raised high. Like a blooming flower, countless sword images sprang forth, filling the air. After that, millions of sword images quivered before descending like the rain. The sword images instantly enveloped those attackers, tearing through weapons and armor. Nothing could stop them. After this one attack, countless life forms fell from the sky. Their bodies had bloody holes in them that didn't look too big, but the fires of their souls were extinguished. The moment they were struck, the will of the sword Dao crushed their souls. The human wave tactic failed, leaving the divine venerates in a state of shock and fury as their people die. This was definitely the most terrifying expert that they had ever seen. He can sever the laws of space-time, and the will of his sword Dao is invincible. Who can stop him? demanded one of them with a mixture of fury and helplessness. Unless the merge of your bone and blood is complete, the only way to stop him is using a true heavenly doubt crown, 
which allows you to merge into the heavenly Tao's. Only then can you face the ability to sever the laws of space-time, said one of them. However, they were all divine venerates. Although they possessed both supreme blood and supreme bones, at their realm, fully merging them required an enormous amount of primal chaos chi. Since that was the case, compared to these heavenly geniuses in the immortal king realm, they had little chance of actually accomplishing it. A sword cultivator? I want to see if you really are as amazing as the legends say you are. Just then, an arrogant voice rang out. Chapter 3888 Give You Three Moves His voice resounded like thunder, reverberating through the air. At this moment, a sinister aura covered the entire world, overwhelming it with a violent power that made it hard to breathe. In the distance, a person with a dragon spear emerged. With every step he took, the earth quivered. It was like an immemorial demon God had come. This person was the one who had been here the longest, long Kenyan. He also had a dragon inheritance, and it was from the most treacherous dragon, the crafty ghost fox evil dragon race. The ghost fox evil dragon race was from the same branch as the dark evil dragon and the purgatory evil dragon. The evil dragon race had violent and dark blood flowing in their veins. They were naturally brutal and bloodthirsty. However, they also had their own pride and didn't play sinister schemes. It was only the ghost fox evil dragon that specialized in that. Legend had it that the ghost fox was the emperor race of the foxes in the desolate era. Although they were a beast race, they also possessed the power of the ghost Tao. In a battle against the evil dragon race, they were ultimately wiped out. However, before being annihilated, the ghost fox race laid down a curse, making the evil dragon race pay a terrifying price. It was a curse that would destroy the evil dragon race in the future. At the time, the evil dragon race didn't particularly care about the curse. It was only later, hundreds of thousands of years later, that mutated evil dragons began to appear amongst them. These evil dragons appeared no different from ordinary evil dragons at the start. But once they grew strong, the ghost foxes will would awaken within them, and they would betray the dragon race. They were not just powerful, but also crafty. Some ghost fox evil dragons were even sitting in positions of power within the dragon race. Later on, they personally wiped out all their subordinates. Some ghost fox evil dragons might not be in positions of authority, but they secretly caused the deaths of their branch. The evil dragon had millions of branches, and every branch would produce ghost fox evil dragons. Because of them, the evil dragon race took immense losses during this period. In the end, the evil dragon race underwent a major cleansing, slaughtering countless members of their own race with the mark of the ghost fox on them. As a result, the powerful evil dragon race plummeted within the ranks of the dragon race, never to recover. Only at that moment did the evil dragon race come to a grim realization. The ghost fox race's curse was not just a scare tactic. It was merged into their bloodline. As the evil dragon race continued to reproduce, their bloodline was passed down and more mutated evil dragons appeared. They would awaken the curse of the ghost fox, giving them an intense desire to destroy the evil dragon race. The evil dragon race's biggest headache was that there was no way to resolve this curse. The only method was for the sacred dragon's holy light to cleanse their entire race. That would be the only way to fully remove the curse. However, every generation's sacred dragon was a high and mighty emperor. Existences like them did not deign to help the evil dragon race. Thus, the evil dragon race could only set up spies within their ranks to keep an eye on their members, catching any ghost fox evil dragons that were born. Despite that, every tens of thousands of years, a new calamity caused by the ghost fox evil dragons would happen. Every time, a storm of blood followed. Just like the evil dragon was the nightmare of many cultivators, 
now the ghost fox evil dragon became the nightmare of the evil dragon race in long kenyon's youth he had a lucky encounter and found a ghost fox evil dragon on the verge of death that ghost fox evil dragon had been hunted down by the evil dragon race's experts although it ultimately slaughtered its pursuers it also was pushed past its limit seeing long kenyon and finding his character was a good match for its sinister and vicious self it found that despite being human long kenyon didn't reject its blood hence it didn't give long kenyon a chance to decline it directly transferred its own bloodline power magical arts divine abilities and ghost foxes will into long kenyon's body if it weren't for the ghost fox evil dragon being completely out of energy to the point that it couldn't simply take over his body there was no way that this would have benefited long kenyon that ghost fox evil dragon knew that as long as the ghost fox's will was present long kenyon would go crazy as soon as he encountered any member of the evil dragon race that was enough for it after obtaining the inheritance of the ghost fox evil dragon long kenyon's power soared like a shooting star not one person could receive a single blow from him in the same realm and that continued for many years until he encountered zaya guam only then did his undefeatable legend end however long kenyon refused to accept this loss in his mind the reason he lost was because he hadn't fully drawn out all of his potential his ghost fox evil dragons supreme blood and supreme bone were in slumber and he had to obtain enough primal chaos kai to awaken them however even after all his efforts he was barely able to gather any primal chaos kai with it let alone merging his supreme bone and supreme blood he couldn't even awaken his supreme blood the simplest step in the end he sealed himself waiting for his chance as long chen triggered a change in the heavenly tomb he caused the treasure lands to open at the same time long kenyon sensed the call of dragon blood when he came here and saw the sacred dragon scale he wanted to absorb it but he was repelled by its divine might hence he couldn't absorb it however he found that the thing calling him was one of the immemorial dragons not the golden dragon scale to be precise it was the corpse of a ghost fox evil dragon now he had finished absorbing its essence blood he was the first to arrive and already had the inheritance of the ghost fox evil dragon as that immemorial dragon corpse had a high affinity with him he naturally absorbed it faster than others other than that the ghost fox evil dragon's aura was too special leaving the others with no way but to absorb the primal chaos kai coming from it only he was capable of obtaining its acknowledgment as he absorbed its essence blood he also received the nourishment of primal chaos kai thus he had finally achieved his goal and came out to attack long chen seeing yu Xifeng blocking the way making dozens of double supreme divine venerates flee he directly challenged yu Xifeng. At this moment, his powerful blood kai shook everyone, and his heavenly Tao crown had two different kinds of runes flowing within it. He, he has fully merged his supreme bone and supreme blood. He is a true double supreme, cried out a city lord enviously. Only when one had fully merged the bone and blood could one become a true double supreme. Furthermore, the synergy between the two was far from a mere addition their combined power multiplied exponentially potentially dozens of times after all long kenyon was an immortal king the optimal realm for this merger the amount of primal chaos kai that he required was less than one ten thousandth of what a divine venerate required a true double supreme had finally appeared at this moment long kenyon's aura crashed down on everyone the legends surrounding double supremes left everyone breathless including the city lords who watched with a mix of anticipation and trepidation fortunately long chen was the target not them long kenyon pointed his spear at yu Xifen. 
he coldly said i'll give you three moves go ahead and attack chapter three thousand eight hundred eighty nine treacherous long kenyon a giant dragon with foxy eyes appeared in long kenyon's manifestation looking nefarious a dragon's eyes were usually circular but these peculiar ones were long and narrow its gaze alone contained the dark aura of hatred and maliciousness it was like those eyes were filled with a desire to destroy the entire world and people couldn't help being afraid when looking at them two divine radiances intertwined atop this dragon representing the power of long kenyon's supreme blood and supreme bone in contrast others around him were surrounded by two kinds of runes as well yet they remained separate and unable to converge within long kenyon's manifestation however these two energies seamlessly melded together resembling flowing currents proof that he had fully merged his supreme blood and supreme bone at this moment long kenyon pointed his spear at yuzyphon and his aura emanated a reserved intensity akin to a crouching tiger waiting to launch the killing blow sword cultivators are like unshathed swords no one can stop them as they have severed their path of retreat they will fearlessly face even the most formidable opponents they are also willing to face certain death knowing that to do otherwise would shatter their dow heart rendering them unworthy of the title sword cultivator so i wonder do you dare to fight me asked long kenyon provokingly within the three thousand worlds long kenyon was the first to fully merge his supreme blood and supreme bone and the first thing he did after that was to challenge you Zyphen. brimming with anticipation everyone looked at you Zyphen to see his response however you Zyphen was just standing there without a single ripple on his handsome face his gaze was still calm seemingly indifferent as if nothing could shake him to the surprise of all present Yu Zyphen gradually sheathed his sword. This unexpected action left everyone in a state of bewilderment. A sword cultivator was said to be the proudest cultivator in this world. They were unafraid of any challenge and cultivated another kind of undefeatable Tao. Hence, they had to maintain a clear Tao heart at all times. Otherwise, if their Tao heart was clouded, they would forever lose the heart of the sword Tao. For someone like Long Kenyon to challenge him, how could Yu Zyphen possibly decline? However, against all expectations, he actually sheathed his sword. What childish provocations, what crude acting. Do you want me to charge into your obvious trap? Yu Zyphen looked at Long Kenyon. His gaze was cold, and his voice was even colder. Moreover, those eyes of his were so clear as if they could see through all falsehoods in this world upon being stared at like that long kenyon's heart shuddered but he managed to maintain a composed expression so a sword cultivator is simply this those legends about a sword god are truly just stories for children the sword god is a fake covered in dog shit in an instant a wave of trepidation washed over the hearts of everyone present as they gazed at long kenyon with sheer horror it had to be known that while the legend of the sword god had nothing backing it it was a sacred existence to sword cultivators numerous legends circulated about the sword god each with its own variations consequently many people doubted whether or not the sword god ever existed but to sword cultivators the sword god was their faith to question the sword god was to challenge the core of their faith as a result anyone who dared to show disrespect toward the sword god would be hunted down by all sword cultivators it was considered the gravest blasphemy within their ranks had long kenyon gone crazy no one knew how many terrifying sword cultivators existed within the nine heavens and ten lands he was clearly asking to die. Let alone a little immortal king like him, even divine venerates wouldn't dare to speak like that. A profound silence enveloped the surroundings as all eyes remained fixed upon Yu Zyphen. Much to their astonishment, he remained remarkably composed, 
devoid of any visible signs of anger. However, his gaze turned even colder, piercing through the onlookers. Though his sword was shaded, his hand clung firmly to the hilt, a subtle indication of his unwavering readiness. You are a second-rate expert, as true experts disdain using such schemes. My boss said that those who scheme like this lack confidence in themselves. Someone who lacks confidence will waste their energy on thinking up schemes. Thus, some people may appear to be smart schemers, when in reality, they are the epitome of foolishness. On the other hand, some people may look foolish outwardly, but possess true wisdom within. You shouldn't have said that. By blaspheming the sword God, you have fully sealed your own fate, leaving me with no choice but to end you. Yu Zifeng looked at Long Kinyan apathetically. Kill me? Ah. Oh. Long Kinyan raised his head like he had just heard the world's funniest joke. Bade words. If you have guts, come over here and fight. Let's see what dodge it the blessing of the sword god is. Long Kinyan even added further provocation, enraging the dragon blood warriors. They were all well aware of Yu Zifeng's unwavering faith in the sword god. This Long Kinyan's mouth was just too filthy. On the other hand, Yu Zifeng ignored this provocation and slowly closed his eyes. The world turned silent, as if all sound had suddenly vanished, being sucked away without a trace. At the same time, Long Kinyan's hair stood on end. His very soul trembled, as though some ancient beast had fixed its gaze upon him. All of a sudden, Yu Zifeng opened his eyes, revealing two piercing sword-like runes in them. There was no flowing blood kai, no rumbling of the heavenly dows, and no manifestation. But all the murderous aura within heaven and earth seemed to gather within Yu Zifeng. Yu Zifeng's sword then came out of its sheath like a dragon cry, filled with a murderous feeling. A ripple of radiant light cascaded forth from the sword, swiftly descending toward its target. Yu Zifeng then moved along with his sword, directing its target not toward Long Kinyan, but toward a specific point in front of him to the left. Boom! With a heaven-shaking explosion, the void was torn apart, exposing countless chains. They were like a net protecting Long Kinyan. What treachery! He set up a trap beforehand, raged a dragon blood warrior furiously. Long Kinyan had intentionally provoked Yu Zifeng just to make him run into this trap. Those chains were originally invisible, impossible to sense. If it weren't for Yu Zifeng's attack, no one would have noticed their existence. However, when Yu Zifeng's sword struck them, they instantly shattered. In front of Yu Zifeng's sword Kai, unbreakable chains were cut through like mustard leaves, incapable of blocking his sword at all. At this moment, Yu Zifeng appeared in front of Long Kinyan. He then swung his sword three more times, and three nets of chains were shattered, startling everyone. Long Kinyan was quite the schemer. How had he set up such a trap without anyone noticing it? This trap had escaped everyone else's senses, but not Yu Zyphig's. Just as the final net was destroyed, a spear silently pierced toward Yu Zyphig's back, making everyone jump. Long Kinyan had clearly been in front of him. Zyphon to watch out. Zaya Chen and the others cried out. Chapter 3890 Unstoppable Sword Everyone's Warning was too late. Yu Zyphon's back was already pierced by that spear. However, to everyone's surprise, after his body was pierced, it dissipated like smoke. A sword then struck the master of that spear from a bizarre angle, exposing it. It was another long Kinyan, a clone art. This clone also dissipated as Yu Zyphon's sword slashed through its fading image. Just as everyone thought that this attack had no effect, they saw blood in the distance. The clone, which had already fled and dodged Yu Zyphon's attack, was still injured by his sword Kai. There was a large cut in its chest. Long Kinyan's clone roared furiously with a voice, 
that was not human it was a dragon's roar that contained furious dragon might so you absorb that dragon's essence blood and soul and this clone is a puppet condensed from its dragon soul with your dragon blood as a foundation as long as your dragon blood continues to exist it will live forever but so what if this is your trump card you won't survive three moves said Yu Zifeng. he stepped forward vanishing his speed seemed to have escaped the limitations of space-time people barely saw a glimpse of his sword as it slashed toward long kinyon you keep talking big how shameless long kinyon roared furiously his traps had no effect on you zyphon and he was even looked down upon this was a huge insult to him evil dragon protection dragon bone golden body in a sudden eruption of power golden bone armor burst out of long kinyon's skin the bone plates swiftly assembled enveloping him in complete protection every bone plate gave off a terrifying aura akin to a scaled armor made from world domain divine items when this armor appeared his aura instantly erupted to a new level the supreme bone is summoned as a bone armor his supreme bone is actually defensive every person's supreme bone had different abilities with some emphasizing offensive prowess while others prioritized defense moreover they had a vast array of attributes offering endless special abilities on the other hand supreme blood was something that could be directly summoned to increase one's power but the supreme bone could only bring out its true potential once it was merged with the supreme blood as a foundation for its power the potential for diverse and extraordinary powers seemed limitless when long kenyon's bone armor appeared streaks of lightning appeared in the sky and crashed down upon him heavenly lightning tempering armor a chorus of startled cries rang through the air it was believed that when powerful magical arts and divine weapons were born into this world they would inevitably attract the wrath of heavenly lightning the existence of some supremely powerful armor and armored magical arts would be viewed as a direct challenge to the heavenly dows and draw down heavenly punishment if they could not endure the might of the heavenly dows they would be destroyed and the person who tried to summon them would also be slain at this moment spears of lightning crashed down with shocking auras each of them was practically equivalent to a full power attack of a city lord however unexpectedly those lightning spears would simply explode on contact with this bone armor unable to cause any damage after thirty-six bolts of lightning failed to damage the bone armor a new layer of resplendent light appeared on it the bone armor finished the tribulation it has obtained the approval of heaven and earth what can possibly break it a city lord cried out in shock it was their first time seeing such a terrifying defense yu Zyphen was now right in front of long kinyon's true body his sword descending with formidable force at the same time long kinyon's clone also attacked yu Zyphen's back what the startled cries rang out what was long kinyon intending was he really going to receive yu Zyphen's attack with his bone armor if long kinyon could block yu Zyphen's attack then yu Zyphen would be met with the fatal strike of his clone but if long kinyon failed to block it his true body would be slain while his clone would persist still capable of killing yu Zyphen. this was the unique characteristic of a dragon blood clone it had its own consciousness and could even survive after the true body died in this situation regardless of the outcome it seemed inevitable that yu Zyphen's fate would be sealed however yu Zyphen showed no sign of giving up seeing this everyone instantly understood that a sword cultivator possessed their own pride and confidence if yu Zyphen retreated it would become a setback to his dao heart as a sword cultivator he couldn't fear death nor could he do anything to ruin his dao heart 
Long Kenyon had taken note of this point before setting up this trap for him. However, Yu Xiphant was still indifferent. Without the slightest ripple in his eyes, his sword slashed toward Long Kenyon's head. All of a sudden, Long Kenyon made a move. He raised his hand, and to everyone's surprise, a dragon spear appeared in his grasp. The very same dragon spear that was originally held by his clone now resided in his hand. Boop. Holding his spear horizontally, he directly clashed with Yu Xifeng's sword. As a result, a wave of sword Kai exploded, tearing through heaven and earth, causing a black crack to spread all the way to the end of the world. That black crack continued through Long Kenyon's spear and into his body. His bone armor became covered in cracks as well. Long Kenyon coughed up blood. In an instant, his bone armor's divine light turned dim, and he was almost slain. What a... Seeing this, the spectators' eyes almost popped out of their sockets. It had to be known that Long Kenyon's battle armor hadn't even been shaken by heavenly lightning, showcasing its astonishing defensive powers. But now it was almost destroyed by one strike of Yu Xifeng's sword. Sword soul. Long Kenyon retreated far into the distance, staring at Yu Xifeng in shock and disbelief. His bone armor was covered in countless cracks, and his dragon spear now had a peanut-sized nick in it. This one blow had almost crushed him alongside his weapon. Yu Xifeng's sword possessed a supreme will, a kind of energy containing his full mind and spirit. It was something that transcended all laws. When Long Kenyon blocked that sword, his soul almost crumbled, as if his soul was fleeing for its life. Hence, he was shocked, angry, and terrified. Just now, if he hadn't absorbed his clone's power at the last minute, this attack would have wiped him out of existence. That was the first move. Here comes the second. Yu Xifeng's sword trembled. In a seamless fusion of sword and man, he transformed into a shooting star, shooting toward Long Kenyon with unmatchable speed and precision. Chapter 3891 Splitting Sharpness Yu Xifeng achieved absolute unity with his sword, transcending his physical form. His figure then vanished, leaving nothing but the ethereal embodiment of his sword, when this sword slashed through the air, the ten thousand Daos crumbled in front of it. Long Kenyon was engulfed by an extraordinary sense of terror, realizing that he had severely underestimated Yu Zyphen. He had never encountered such a terrifying sword cultivator before. When Yu Zyphen vanished, an inexplicable phenomenon unfolded. In an instant, all presence and existence vanished as well, leaving behind an eerie emptiness. All that remained seemed to be Long Kenyon alone, and the sword slashing down upon him seemed completely unstoppable. He actually felt despair well up within him. Long Kenyon knew that his will was already suppressed by Yu Zifeng's sword Dao. He had already lost, and the price of loss was death. Ghost Fox Sacrifice Blood Bone Heavenly Burial In a sudden surge of blood, Crimson streams gushed out of Long Kenyon's body. His manifestation then trembled, and the bone plates on his body shifted and stacked on top of each other, transforming him into a giant dragon. Boom! This giant dragon was the ghost fox, evil dragon. Long Kenyon had actually sacrificed a portion of his supreme blood and supreme bone in order to summon the heroic spirit of the ghost fox, evil dragon. As this ghost fox evil dragon unleashed a thunderous roar, a wave of unimaginable power swept through the surroundings. Countless individuals experienced excruciating pain as if their heads were splitting apart. Their ears ruptured, causing blood to pour forth, rendering them deaf, unable to hear anything anymore. Evil dragon sphere. Long Kenyon's face was pale while standing atop the ghost fox evil dragon's head. As he formed hand seals, his arm merged with the ghost fox evil dragon. The jaws of the ghost fox evil dragon opened wide, and within its maw, 
a colossal sphere began to form this sphere pulsated with two distinct streams of energy intertwining within it and the sheer magnitude of this power reverberated through the heavens causing even the stars themselves to tremble in response what kind of power is this even city lords cried out in shock they had never seen such a terrifying move before die with a resounding roar long kenyon's hand seals changed he then forcefully slammed his hands on the dragon's head instantly blood-colored marks spread across its massive head and that spear shot out with endless destructive energy meanwhile yu Zyfen was still merged with his sword his power unwavering spots of light appeared on the edge of his sword resembling a constellation of stars in front of countless experts yu Zyfen pierced into that giant sphere just like that Boom. with a heaven-shaking explosion that giant sphere was pierced through sending shock waves rippling in every direction amidst the chaos a ray of sword kai continued to surge toward the ghost fox evil dragon what the everyone was stunned by this had this terrifying attack stopped yu Zyfen or not the sphere of light remained but yu Zyfen's sword kai had pierced through it to strike the ghost fox evil dragon's head Boom. that spear and the ghost fox evil dragon's head exploded at the same time unleashing massive mushroom clouds that billowed into the sky however the aftermath lingered as if time itself had slowed down gradually dissipating the remnants of the devastating impact although that sphere of light had been pierced yu Zyfen's attack was incredibly condensed so it continued to strike the ghost fox evil dragon at almost the same time that was why everyone saw two giant mushroom clouds explode at the same time in the surroundings fragments of the grand dao runes became visible they also saw heaven and earth torn asunder and wild kai waves surging forth countless experts were blown away by these kai waves even the city lords were unable to stand at the core of this tempest and were forced to retreat these astral winds were like blades forcibly ripping a layer of earth out of the ground the immense power caused even the surrounding eighteen dragon corpses to be blown far into the distance when the dragon corpses were moved it revealed the underground primal chaos sources observing from above the scene resembled a circular formation of eighteen spring water mouths surrounding the area where long chen stood with the displacement of these eighteen dragon corpses a torrent of boundless primal chaos kai surged forth filling the surroundings with its raw and untamed energy previously these sources had been suppressed by the dragon corpses and flowed out slower through them hence without any obstruction the primal chaos kai soared and this world instantly became a sea of primal chaos kai seeing this scene everyone was delighted they didn't even need to do anything just standing there they were absorbing endless primal chaos kai as they absorbed this primal chaos kai they looked at the battlefield they saw yu Zyfen calmly standing there looking the same as ever with his hair and robes fluttering lightly other than his face being slightly pale it seemed that he was fine heavens sword cultivators really are unnatural monsters he's fine even after such a terrifying attack the city lords were especially shocked when they saw this even for them if they were struck by such an attack not even a trace of them would exist afterward standing in front of yu Zyfing, long kinyan coughed up blood each spurt accompanied by the emergence of a dense blood mist that mist then scattered in the wind transforming into runes that flowed around him what shocked the onlookers was the fist-sized hole in his chest through that hole it was possible to see a ghost fox evil dragon crazily raging in his manifestation when yu Zyfing's sword quivered the void trembled along with it he then looked at long kinyan coldly that was the second move you said that you'd give me three moves 
then I promise that if you can receive my third move without dying, I'll let you live. Yu Zifeng's voice was completely apathetic from the start. Regardless of Long Kinian's provocations or the emergence of his formidable trump cards, Yu Zifeng remained as calm and serene as a bottomless well. This profound apathy exuded an aura of an unfathomable existence. His sharp gaze in particular felt like it could pierce through all fabrications in this world. It was a gaze that others didn't dare to look directly at, as if a single gaze could pierce through the secrets deep within a person's heart. Yu Zifeng's sword then pointed at Long Kinyin. When the sharp pull of the sword Dao locked onto him, Long Kinyin instantly felt like he had become immortal. It was as though his clothes were stripped from him, and he was tossed into the ice and snow. That icy feeling then spread throughout his whole body, leaving even his soul numb. Long Kinyin was horrified, unable to think what had gone wrong. He had obtained the inheritance of the ghost fox evil dragon. After that, with an ocean's worth of primal chaos kai, he had merged his supreme blood and supreme bone. He had thought that he was unrivaled within the same realm, that he would sweep through the three thousand worlds. He had even been planning on getting revenge on Zayed Yuang after leaving this world. Then he would step into the peak of his life, becoming the master of the cosmos. However, his dreams hadn't even started before he encountered Yu Zifeng. With two emotionless blows, Yu Zifeng shattered his confidence along with those dreams. Yu Zifeng actually called himself a subordinate of Long Chen. In other words, he was weaker than Long Chen. Now, Long Kinyin couldn't even beat Long Chen's subordinate. Long Kinyin took this as a wordless insult. Ah! Uh, Long Kinyin suddenly roared like an injured beast, full of anger and resentment. He refused to accept this cruel reality. His manifestation then exploded, transforming into fragments that merged into his body. His aura, which was originally starting to weaken, once more reached its peak. It was unknown what secret art he had used to instantly recover his lost energy. Come, let me see just how strong this attack of yours is, shouted Long Kinian. When people heard this, they shook their heads. Long Kinian had lost, having accepted his defeat in his soul. He had already lost the courage to compete with Yu Zifen. Right now, he was only thinking about receiving Yu Zifeng's attack to stay alive. It could be said that Yu Zifeng had shattered his confidence with two attacks along with his ambitions. Yu Zifeng snorted and raised his sword. But all of a sudden, his gaze turned cold. He stamped on the air and then vanished. What shocked everyone was that Yu Zifeng didn't attack Long Kinyin. Instead, he appeared by Long Chen's side and swept his sword out. A dagger somehow appeared in the air, striking Yu Zifeng's sword. As a result, the void exploded and a figure was forced out. Chapter 3892 Masochist Jai Wuming Zaya Chen and Guo Ran cried out furiously. Their worst fears had become reality. The fearsome assassin Jai Wuming had finished his merger. Before this, Jai Wuming already had high talent in controlling space-time. So, now that his supreme blood and supreme bone had merged, his assassination arts were unstoppable. Even Zaya Chen's formation had lost effect against him. He had managed to slip through them and get close to Long Chen without any of them being aware of it. Fortunately, Yu Zifen was here. Otherwise, if they allowed Jai Wuming to get to Long Chen, the consequences would be too terrible to imagine. When Yu Zifeng's sword stopped Jai Wuming, Jai Wuming sneered, his body slowly fading. Like a drop of water falling into the sea, not a trace of him could be found. Yu Zifeng's expression changed ever so slightly. When Jai Wuming vanished, even his sword Dao failed to lock onto him. He could no longer track Jai Wuming. Protect boss, shouted Zaya Chen. The dragon blood warriors retreated. 
holding a tighter encirclement around Long Chen. They didn't know if being this close would interfere with his absorption of the dragon runes, but there were no other solutions. Long Chen's safety was more important. Jai Wuming's voice began to ring out, coming from every direction. Interesting. So what? If I'd aim to kill Long Chen, you can protect him, but if I aim to kill someone else... Suddenly, Yu Zifen vanished again, his sword piercing toward the void and at a figure that appeared for only a flash. This time, Jai Wuming wasn't aiming for Long Chen, but a dragon blood warrior. As for that dragon blood warrior, he didn't even sense anything. Jai Wuming's ghost like movement art was chilling. Idiot! If you have guts, come out and fight! shouted Yuo Ran furiously. Only an idiot would say something so idiotic. My goal isn't to be number one. I only want that dragon scale. He he, as long as I kill Long Chen, all the energy that he absorbed will be released. All his efforts will have been for nothing. I want to know how much power does an already injured sword cultivator have to be able to stop me? You should know that the initiative is in my grasp. As for you, you are forced to defend passively. You're using up far more energy than me. How many of my attacks can you block? I can fail countless times, but if you fail once, it means that one of you will be slain. Yu Zifend once more attacked, accurately blocking Jai Wuming's next attack. The two of them were so fast that others only saw sparks fly. They didn't even get a glimpse of Jai Wuming this time. People looked at Yu Zifeng in shock. Sword cultivators were said to be the bane of assassins. Assassins could accurately kill their targets in one blow without them even being aware of it. But sword cultivators were the only exception. Sword cultivators had frighteningly sharp senses that could render the concealing techniques of assassins ineffective. The latter might not even be able to get close before being slain. Even so, Yu Zifen was facing no ordinary assassin but the Bloodkill Hole's greatest heavenly genius, someone who had merged his supreme blood and supreme bone, along with the spatial and temporal energy. However, even this terrifying assassin was blocked by Yu Zifen, unable to harm anyone. People were amazed by both of them. Let's see how you will guard this. Just then, Long Kinyin grasped his chance and came charging over with his dragon spear. Although he didn't know Jai Wuming, the enemy of his enemy was his friend. As long as Long Kinyin could hold back Yu Zifeng, even for just a moment, Jai Wuming would instantly kill Long Chen. Long Kinyin admitted that he wasn't a match for Yu Zifeng but he refused to accept this lying down. He would rather gamble, speculating whether Yu Zifen would dare to focus his full power on him, or if Yu Zifen would prioritize dealing with Jai Wuming instead. Guarding until you see the Yama King should be no problem. Suddenly, a large figure appeared in front of Long Kinyin and tossed something at him. It was a human head with an expression of furious resentment. It belonged to the Lord of Silver Moon City. As for the one blocking Long Kinyin, it was Gu Yang. He was covered in blood and had dozens of small wounds on his body. It seemed that he had paid a price to kill the Lord of Silver Moon City. But shockingly, even though he was covered in wounds, his aura was even stronger than before. He was like an injured wild beast. They were always the most dangerous ones they were injured. Which trash are you to dare to block my path? Scram! Long Kinyin roared furiously, not viewing Gu Yang as a serious opponent. He then stabbed his spear at Gu Yang. To everyone's surprise, Gu Yang simply stood there, neither dodging nor blocking. As a result, Long Kinyin's dragon spear directly stabbed through his shoulder. Gu Yang, Zaya Chen, Guo Ran and the others were dumbfounded. They didn't understand why Gu Yang didn't block this attack. Was he already out of energy? Even Long Kinyin was startled. What was this bold fellow doing? Ah! Uh, 
Ku Yang's laughter resonated, emanating a somber and eerie tone. Blood then slowly trickled down from his wound. When ten thousand dragon runes appeared in his eyes, his face reflected the visage of a fiendish being. Good, just like that, just like that. I'm close, keep going. Ku Yang suddenly took a step back, pulling the spear out. After that, he pointed at his own chest, indicating for Long Kenyon to keep stabbing him. Are you a masochist? You know you can't sue me, right? Long Kenyon was dumbfounded. He had never witnessed someone so crazy. If you don't come, let me. Without hesitation, Gu Yang fearlessly moved forward and allowed the spear to stab into his chest. More blood then gushed out of the wound. Everyone just stared, thinking that he had gone insane. Boom! Suddenly, an explosion shook this world, causing everyone's heart to tighten. It felt like someone had just viciously squeezed their insides. Hehe, <laughs> finally it's enough! Gu Yang looked at the spear inside of his chest and laughed sinisterly. As the runes in his eyes weaved together, they were no longer the eyes of a human, but those of a fiend. Boom! The next moment, another explosion erupted and countless heavily geniuses coughed up blood. They didn't even know what they were injured by. People only looked around in terror, not knowing what was going on. The spear in Gu Yang's body shook almost forced out of his body. At the same time, Long Kinyan's palms met with an intense backlash. He almost lost hold of his dragon spear. Gu Yang's strange eyes were staring at him, making his hair stand on end. For some reason, an intense sensation of terror climbed within him. What, what kind of monster are you? shouted Long Kinyan. Boom! As another explosion erupted, Long Kinyan grunted and was blown back along with his spear. The sheer impact caused his feet to dig into the void, leaving behind a trail of smoke as he fought to regain his balance and stabilize himself. When the spear was forced out of Gu Yang's body, people could finally see the bloody hole in his chest. They then saw the source of that explosive sound his heart beat. Finally, success! Wrath of ten thousand dragons dies the world. Ten thousand dragon armor. Gu Yang roared, his voice piercing the clouds and splitting rocks. As the ten thousand dragons in his manifestation roared, the sky changed color. Chapter 3893 Contemptible Jai Wuming the roars of ten thousand dragons shook the world, seeming to come from the distant past, and yet still containing endless killing intent. At this moment, the ten thousand dragons in Gu Yang's manifestation were flying, filling the sky. As for his scale armor, it was now covered in images of various dragons. Gu Yang appeared to possess immense power, as if the strength of ten thousand dragons resided within him. This was a true dragon blood battle armor, surrounded by blood kai that erupted with fierce intensity. Witnessing this spectacle, Long Kinyan was left dumbfounded. But he was not the only one. Xia Chen, Guo Ran, and the other dragon blood warriors shared the same astonishment. Their gazes fixed on Gu Yang, but they couldn't recognize him. Presently, Gu Yang emanated an overwhelming killing intent, his presence reeking of raw brutality and an insatiable thirst for blood. Moreover, his eyes appeared as if multiplied by ten thousand, each layering upon the other, casting a foreboding and ominous gaze. Excellent, I finally ignited the wrath of the ten thousand dragons. Now the battle can really start. Come, the first captain of the Dragon Blood Legion would like to ask for some pointers. Gu Yang's voice was raspy like a dragon cry, containing immense fury. As countless runes slowly spun around his spear, people were mesmerized by it, witnessing the boundless energy brewing within. Only now did people understand why Gu Yang was covered in wounds. He had accumulated these injuries to ignite the wrath of the ten thousand dragons. He had fought the Lord of Silver Moon City. 
but the city lord was too weak. Even when Gu Yang wanted to accumulate injuries, the fight was unable to stimulate the fury of the ten thousand dragons. Thus, he allowed Long Kinyin, who innately possessed dragon blood power, to injure him. Even better, Long Kinyin also had the inheritance of the ghost fox, Evil Dragon, who was not only the enemy of the evil dragon race but also a humiliation to the entire dragon race. The dragon race was far too prideful to accept such schemers into their ranks, as they relied on power to resolve their conflicts. However, the ghost fox evil dragon shattered that norm, resulting in the wrath of the ten thousand dragons. As a result, when Long Kinyin's power entered Gu Yang's body, the effect was a million times better than the city lord's attack, helping Gu Yang quickly reach the necessary level. This was Gu Yang's ultimate trump card. However, he only knew of this move and had never managed to activate it until now, as he successfully summoned and donned the 10,000 dragon battle armor, the power of 10,000 dragons flowed through his body. He then smashed his spear at Long Kinyin. Ooh. In response, Long Kinyin fiercely swung his spear as well, triggering a tremendous explosion that reverberated through the surroundings. After that, the sky was engulfed in giant ripples, while the sheer force of the impact sent Long Kinyin flying. What? If? Seeing this scene, everyone was shocked. Although Long Kinyin had been beaten by Yu Zyphen, they had all borne witness to his power. Moreover, Long Kinyin had used a secret art to raise his power to his peak in preparation for receiving Yu Zyphen's final blow. Hence, it could be said that the current Long Kinyin was no weaker than when he fought Yu Zyphen. In fact, he might be even stronger. But even in that state, he was blown away by Gu Yang, leaving the people dumbfounded. With a forceful stomp on the air, Gu Yang shot after Long Kinyin, generating a blazing tempest. He suddenly appeared right in front of Long Kinyin, and then unleashed a storm of attacks. Long Kinyin let out a fierce roar, desperately attempting to block Gu Yang's relentless assault. But despite his valiant efforts, he was still forced back. Within a matter of mere moments, he was propelled beyond the horizon, disappearing from sight. Yet, the remnants of their battle were still felt as the reverberations of their earth-shattering Kai waves resonated in the air. Meanwhile, Yu Zifeng slashed his sword once more, blocking Jai Wuming's next assassination attempt. Just as Yu Zifeng successfully blocked Jai Wuming's assault, Guo Ran and Xia Chen swiftly joined the fray. Their weapons and talismans exploded at Jai Wuming's location, but to their surprise, Jai Wuming had already vanished. They couldn't harm him at all. As for Yu Zifeng, his face was growing paler. To spread his mental energy throughout the entire battlefield was extremely taxing. Furthermore, he had just used up a great deal of energy fighting Long Kinyin. Jai Wuming just had to casually attack but Yu Zifen was constantly using up a great deal of energy to block him. If this continued, Yu Zifen wouldn't be able to last much longer. But there was no other solution. Other than Yu Zifen, no one could stop Jai Wuming who could control space and time. Anyone who was sneak attacked by him would almost certainly die. Just then, the divine venerates in the surroundings also noticed this. There were over a trillion people here, now, all staring at the golden egg that Long Chen was in, unable to wait any longer. In the end, someone roared and took the lead to charge over. Following that, tens of thousands of divine venerates and a trillion heavenly geniuses crashed forward like the tide. In response, Lai Kai and Song Minjuan swung their weapons. To people's surprise, even after experiencing such a bloody battle, both of their auras had only grown stronger. Even city lords could not receive an attack from them. The malevolent spirits in their manifestations devoured the Yuan spirits of experts, growing stronger as they absorbed more. Thus, 
Lai Kai and Song Minjuan also got stronger. Despite both of them successfully repelling waves of foes, the sheer number of enemies was just too overwhelming. Wanting to be the final lucky victor, these lunatics wanted to tear a piece of meat out of Long Chen. At this moment, Guo Ran and the others couldn't bother with anything else and just entered their killing formation. Even knowing that there was a terrifying specter like Jai Wu Ming in their midst, they could only do this to protect Long Chen. Their killing formation slaughtered all these experts as they met. Even with a numbers advantage, these experts were unable to break through the blockade of the Dragon Blood warriors. Yu Zifeng slashed his sword once more blocking the ephemeral Jai Wu Ming. However, this time, the one to be sent flying wasn't Jai Wu Ming but Yu Zifeng. This was already his seventeenth time blocking Jai Wu Ming, and the amount of energy Yu Zifeng had used up to keep track of him nearly equaled the energy he had exerted while engaging Long Kinyin in combat. On the other hand, Jai Wu Ming barely used up any energy at all. This was an extremely unfair competition, but the battlefield had never been fair. You really are powerful. A sword cultivator in possession of such stamina is beyond my expectations, making me feel uneasy. You are an even greater threat to me than Long Chen, so I should kill you first. Jai Wuming suddenly appeared and pounced on the tottering Yu Zifen. Seeing him in trouble, Zaya Chen and Guo Ran immediately flew over. Don't fall for it. His target is boss, shouted Yu Zifen. He wanted to block Jai Wu Ming, but the world suddenly spun around him. He was at his limit. Just like that, Jai Wu Ming passed through the blockade of the Dragon Blood Warriors like a ghost. Looking at Long Chen in the egg, he smiled sinisterly. His dagger then stabbed toward Long Chen's head like a bolt of lightning. Yet, just as his dagger moved, his expression abruptly changed. It was as if a jolt of electricity had struck him. His body inexplicably vanished, and he gave up on this assassination attempt. When Jai Wuming reappeared, he was already outside of the battlefield. But when people saw him clearly, they cried out in shock. A deep bloody cut could be seen on his neck, like a sharp blade had cut across it, almost cutting off his head. Who's there? shouted Jai Wuming furiously. Just then, ripples appeared in the void before Long Chen, and an indistinct figure slowly emerged from within those ripples. A pretty youthful maiden, appearing no more than thirteen years old, emerged from the rippling void. Adorned in black leather armor, she stood before them. As if to answer Wu Ming's shout, her lips parted, and with deliberate slowness, she uttered three words, Dong Ming Yu. Chapter 3894 Dong Ming Yu vs. Jai Wu Ming When Dong Ming Yu appeared, her appearance remained identical to her presence on the martial heaven continent. Clad in skin-tight black leather armor, she resembled a sleek leopardess exuding a distinct air of danger and allure. She was like an elf of the night. Her very appearance caused the world to darken a bit, as if the curtain of night was on the verge of descending. All of a sudden, the world was filled with a shadowy feeling. You are Dong Minjiu. The shadow sect's Dong Minjiu. Jai Wu Ming's pupils shrank immediately. The name Dong Minjiu had been mentioned to him by Imputa on multiple occasions. Imputa had repeatedly told him that she was the only person in the same realm capable of killing him. Previously, Jai Wu Ming hadn't cared particularly about her. But with the opening of the Three Thousand Worlds, Imputa had sternly warned him to be careful of her. Only then did Jai Wu Ming get a sense of how serious this was. When that dagger appeared in front of his neck, he didn't sense it coming at all. If he hadn't merged his supreme blood and supreme bone, causing his control over space and time, energy to rise to a new level, his head would have left his body. Jai Wuming was a powerful assassin, the future master of the Bloodkill Hall. He was viewed as the best successor by Imputa. In fact, 
His talent in the assassination field might even surpass his master's. His control over space and time made his perception shockingly sharp. A sharp perception was many times simply a matter of innate talent, making it difficult to enhance through external means. With that powerful perception, others couldn't sneak attack him. Moreover, an assassin with sharp perception would always have the initiative, able to advance and retreat up to their own will. They were essentially unbeatable. However, today that sharp perceptiveness failed him. Dong Minjuin's dagger had silently cut his neck without him realizing it. Furthermore, the angle from which Dong Minju's attack came was extremely bizarre. Luckily for him, he had directly used his spatial energy to teleport rather than instinctively retreating. If he had retreated, that dagger would have spun and cleanly cut off his head. Thinking of that, he became covered in a cold sweat. That particular instance marked the closest he had ever come to the brink of death. Little Yu, upon seeing Dong Minju standing before Long Chen like a protective god, Xia Chen and Gua Ran were delighted. She had actually managed to drive away Jai Wuming. Dong Minju nodded toward them. Looking at Yu Zifeng, she said, I'm sorry for being late. Leave this one to me. Yu Zifeng nodded. As a fellow assassin, Dong Minji was the ideal match for Jai Wuming. If Yu Zifeng was in his peak condition, he wouldn't fear Jai Wuming. But Jai Wuming was too contemptible, aiming at everyone, forcing Yu Zifeng to defend passively. It had to be known that sword cultivators specialized in the offense. So, defending was naturally Yu Zifeng's greatest weakness. Upon uttering those words, Dong Minju turned toward Long Chen, who was inside the golden eggshell. Ripples danced in her beautiful eyes, causing her icy countenance to melt and transform into a gentle and warm smile. To her, Long Chen embodied hope, illuminating her world like a beacon of light. He represented a promising future, a radiant world that contrasted with her previous darkness. As long as I'm here, no one can hurt you, whispered Dong Minjiu. She then turned back to Jai Wuming. My oath starts with you. I'll use your blood to bear witness to my oath. HMPH, big words. It just so happens that I want to experience the shadow sex assassination arts. Today, in front of everyone, we'll see just who the true king of assassins is, replied Jai Wuming coldly. No, I'm not competing for the title of king of assassins with you. Our shadow sect only views you as prey. You are my first target, and after I kill you, I have an appointment with your master. So are you ready? Dong Minju's smile vanished as soon as she turned from Long Chen, returning to her former iciness. All her emotion had vanished, and what remained was an apathetic desire to kill. The ignorant are always unafraid. Today, I'll see just how much ability you have. Jai Wuming vanished. There was no longer a trace of him. Even if you have a supreme blood and a supreme bone, even if you've merged the two together, and even if you have talent in the law of space and time, you don't know the true Tao of assassination or the fear in human hearts. Without it, you will never be a decent assassin. It seems that my master overestimated you. Dong Minjiu shook her head in the face of this sudden vanishment. Suddenly, her dagger made a light cut, making ripples in the void. Dong Minjiu's body then entered those ripples like they were a spatial gate. Boom! In the next instant, a powerful explosion erupted in the distance, and Jai Wuming's figure was blown out of the void. Dong Minjiu's body was half outside the spatial gate, while the other half materialized in front of Jai Wuming. A vast expanse of thousands of miles separated the two halves. This astonishing spectacle left even the city lords dumbfounded, for they had never beheld such a mesmerizing display of movement art. Jai Wuming's expression contorted with surprise as his spatial technique proved ineffective against Dong Minjiu. Bewildered, he couldn't fathom how she had done this. He even speculated 
that it might have been a stroke of sheer luck or a blind guess on her part. However, he didn't dare to try it again. If he guessed wrong, then displaying the same technique in front of Dong Minju would be courting death. An assassin's prowess extended beyond the mastery of assassination arts. They also needed to be able to assess the battlefield, swiftly deducing the best attacking style for any situation. Boom. Suddenly, Jai Wuming's left and right hands lit up. Runes then materialized on top of his palms, causing the world around him to ripple like water. Reality itself seemed to invert, as time and space intertwined and twisted in mesmerizing fashion. At this moment, Jai Wuming unleashed the full power of his supreme bones at once. His figure swayed and fragmented, splitting into two, then further dividing into four, and finally expanding into eight distinct embodiments. Eight Jai Wuming materialized simultaneously, there are as indistinguishable from one another. It was evident that this display surpassed mere image reflections or spiritual avatar techniques. These were genuine clones, each embodying his true essence and prowess, making it virtually impossible to discern the original among them. Prepare to witness myself created eight slaughter clone technique. Each of the clones possesses 90% of my peak combat power. Other than my master, no one has ever lived to see it. With this technique, I've killed nine of the Shadow Sect's experts, and you shall be the tenth, said all eight Jai Woomings. All eight of them suddenly vanished. However, they had just vanished when a dagger pierced through the void. A horrifying sight unfolded as Jai Wuming's head flew into the sky along with a spurt of blood. Chapter 3895 Clash of Assassins What? The eight Jai Wumings had just materialized before everyone's eyes. However, before anyone could comprehend what was happening, one of his heads was already decapitated, leaving everyone stunned. As one body and one head fell from the sky, space twisted and Dong Minju's small figure slowly appeared. At the same time, Jai Wuming's lifeless body underwent a transformation. It swiftly became stiff, resembling a desiccated corpse. All signs of vitality had vanished, leaving behind a stark and lifeless figure. The Eight Fate Soul Lasting Art is the most basic assassination art. But if you yourself are not strong enough, will ten thousand of you be worth anything? To waste so much energy on clones in pursuit of only staying alive, you have deviated from the path of assassination. Merely focusing on survival without inflicting harm upon your enemy won't let you attain the Grand Dao, said Dong Minju. Her dagger flowed and rippled like water, concealing its sharpness. Yet, an aura of sheer terror emanated from it, as if it possessed the capacity to sever a neck with a single swift stroke. Jai Wuming had just summoned his clones, and Dong Minju swiftly killed one, startling everyone. But to their astonishment, seven Jai Wuming materialized simultaneously from different directions, launching coordinated attacks on Dong Minju. It appeared to be a formation technique, rendering her defense futile. No matter how Dong Minju blopped, she would be struck by at least one of them. This technique seemed unbeatable. However, seven of them simply passed through Dong Minju, stunning everyone. Her body was like water, their attacks unable to damage her. Not good. Jai Wuming's expression suddenly darkened. At this moment, a dagger silently appeared, cutting off one of his clone's neck. Another clone was slain. Your foolishness is shocking. For me, to say that it is the Eight Fates' soul lasting art proves that I understand it. The Eight Fates correspond to the Eight Gates body, life, pain, limit, vision, death, terror, and opening. Since I have immediately killed your Life Gate clone, you won't have any chance of winning. After that, you decided to foolishly abandon the Eight Fate Soul Chasing Art, switching to the Seven Star God Slaying Art. It is completely out of place. What do you mean, your own Eight Slaughter Clone Technique? 
you merely added something to the eight fate soul chasing art that counts as creating your own technique you are just like your master idiots who think themselves smart in pursuit of the peak you abandoned your foundation in the end you become foolish flowers that only admire themselves don minju snorted and then vanished Thy enraged by the insult jai wuming's fury surged within him with a roar his six clones merged into one entity as he stabbed his dagger into the void oh don minju appeared once more when the two daggers collided a chilling wave of cold air rippled outward causing anyone within its reach to experience a sharp pain within their souls the frigid killing intent almost ripped their very souls out of their bodies. At this moment, milky white mist flowed out of Jai Wuming's manifestation, transforming into a pair of giant hands that were covered in spatial and temporal runes. Those two clones will not recover without at least three to five years of work, am I right? But I suppose it's not a problem. You'll die soon anyway, so there's no need to consider such an issue. Dong Menjiu's expression was still indifferent, akin to a death god who only cared about reaping lives. She seemed devoid of any emotions. Bullshit! I have countless trump cards up my sleeves, more than enough to kill a slut like you. Jai Wuming roared furiously, his visage contorted with overwhelming rage. Those clones were nourished with his blood and effort while he had managed to recover the essence blood and soul essence of his slain clones it would definitely take a few years of nourishment and effort before he could use them again following jai wuming's roar his manifestation unleashed a blaze of divine radiance as those two hands formed a hand seal a surge of majestic energy came spurting out of his dagger akin to a star exploding the impact sent dong minju flying back dai having lost his rationality and cool jai wuming stepped into the void hurtling toward dong minju like a luminous streak in an instant he materialized behind dong minju like a phantom driving his dagger with incomparable speed into her heart blood spurted forth but shockingly it was dong minju's it was jai wuming's blood that marked the tragic exchange. The struck Dong Minju was nothing more than an illusion. In a startling turn of events, the true Dong Minju had materialized behind Jai Wuming like a specter, her dagger stabbing a deep cut into his shoulder. Her expression was cold. After this attack, her dagger spun in her hand. She held it straight rather than backward, slicing it at Jai Wuming's neck. Jai Wuming had originally lost himself in his rage, but this one strike was like a bucket of cold water over his head, instantly clearing up his thoughts. During the exchange, when he struck Dong Minjiu's after image, he immediately had a bad feeling and retreated, which allowed him to avoid being struck in the head. That was why her dagger struck his shoulder. Dong Minju was just too fast, her techniques coming out in a never-ending stream. Even Jai Wuming's spatial and temporal energy was unable to keep up with how quickly she switched techniques. Dong Minju's dagger then struck Jai Wuming's neck a second time even as he retreated. This time, her dagger also failed to achieve its goal, only leaving a large cut that wasn't fatal. However, this sight still left people's hearts pounding wildly. Both of them moved incredibly quickly, and such a rapid close-range fight could be decided in one move. The person who reacted the slightest bit slowly would be killed. Whether it was the heavenly geniuses or the senior divine venerates, they had never seen such a clash of assassins before. Moreover, Dong Minju and Jai Wuming were peak-tier assassins. Their speed moves and movement arts were all terrifying ah jai wuming suddenly laughed his fury and terror completely vanished as if everything before this had not happened he then rubbed the blood on his neck and muttered to himself as expected there is always a heaven beyond the heavens thank you for teaching me this lesson today 
my master was right my greatest shortcoming was that i didn't have a true opponent on my path of growth resulting in me being too conceited i needed a true grindstone to temper my sharpness to grind away my fretfulness only then can i truly reach the next level now my grindstone has finally appeared after killing you i will no longer be the old jai wooming jai wooming was originally enraged after being repeatedly injured but he instantly calmed down this sight left countless people stunned including old monsters that had lived for countless years they asked themselves whether or not they could enter such a state so quickly to control their own anger and fear swiftly this youngster before them was truly terrifying you are wrong i am not your grindstone you are simply my prey or perhaps i should say that your head is a challenge letter to your master said dong minjiu indifferently oh is that so then you'll be disappointed suddenly the two hands in jai wuming's manifestation repeatedly formed mystical hand seals when they spread a gate appeared between them endless faith energy then poured out of it causing the entire world to shake chapter three thousand eight hundred ninety six jai wuming's most powerful state when the faith energy gushed out a milky white light filled the world bending the very laws of heaven and earth the faith energy then spread rapidly causing a profound change wherever it touched in an instant countless experts gasped for air overwhelmed by the immense power of the faith energy the faith energy was like water pressing down on them turning this world into something else they could not breathe nor absorb any energy here it was as if they had lost the support of heaven and earth hence everyone within the range of the faith energy fled for their lives within this region their life and death was in jai wuming's hands it was like a single thought from jai wuming would be enough to kill them in this terrifying faith domain dong mingyu in order to express my respect for you, I've decided to face you in my strongest state, said Jai Wuming within his 30,000-mile faith domain. Although you will die, you can die honored. Although you will die, you can die honored. Although you will die, you can die honored. Jai Wuming's voice echoed throughout heaven and earth countless times. At this moment, he seemed to be the heavenly god of this world his words were the law and nothing could resist him watching this scene everyone was amazed and terrified at the same time although the three thousand worlds also had god cultivators with faith energy they had never even dreamed of seeing someone possessing such concentrated faith energy this faith energy was so concentrated that it died this world taking control of this world's laws it was like the world had been possessed by it the Bloodkill Hall's followers are spread throughout the nine heavens and ten lands, and no one knows just how much faith energy they've accumulated over countless years. All of this faith energy is in Pewdus. As Jai Wuming is just his disciple and cannot directly mobilize it, it must have been bestowed to him, I in Puda, meaning that this should be no more than one hundredth, or perhaps one thousandth of in Pewdus faith energy. But it is already so immense god cultivators really are enviable sighed one expert god cultivators others couldn't help being jealous of them faith energy was the result of specks of sand being concentrated into a soaring tower and the one who stood at the peak of this tower controlled all of its power jai wuming wasn't even the master of this tower but just because he was in Pude's disciple he could use a portion of his faith energy and this portion was enough to make countless experts feel despair as the faith energy raged outside of the domain people could see countless fragments of the heavenly dows being absorbed by it as this faith domain was constantly growing the earth slowly collapsed as if the weight of this domain was unbearable the current jai wuming was no longer someone other supremes dared to even look at merely casting their eyes upon him induce unease in their very souls as if they were committing a blasphemous act against a deity and would be struck 
by some terrifying karma. Even Zaya Chen, Gyuo Ran, and the others stood in stunned silence. Having traversed through the Nine Underworld Island with Long Chen, Gyuo Ran, and Zaya Chen had come into contact with Liao Benking's faith energy domain. However, shockingly, Jai Wu Ming's faith energy was many times stronger than Liao Benking's. That was incomprehensible to them. It was worth noting that both the Nine Underworld Hall and the Blood Kill Hall boasted numerous disciples and shared a comparable history. They were expected to be relatively evenly matched. But Liao Benking was a true Hall master, while Jai Wu Ming was only in Pudis' personal disciple. How could a disciple have so much more faith energy than a Hall master? Xia Chen and Guo Ran were unaware that by destroying the star peering heavenly mirror, the Nine Underworld Islands' faith energy was destabilized, resulting in Liao Benking not being able to draw out his full power. On the other hand, Jai Wu Ming was in Puda's most favored disciple, his successor. In order to be safe, in Puda had placed his divine radiance Bran on Jai Wu Ming. It was due to this that Jai Wu Ming was capable of unleashing so much faith energy. Furthermore, the purity of his faith energy was ten times greater than Liao Benkang's at that time. Thus, Xia Chen and Guo Ran were stunned by the difference. Will Minjiu be all right? Guo Ran was worried. When he looked at Long Chen, he saw that not even the first rune was fully absorbed yet. It wasn't truly a case of Long Chen being too slow at absorbing it. Rather, all of them felt like time was going so slowly that it was standing still. The overwhelming nervousness in the air turned every breath into a simmering torture. As for Mo Nian, his divine palace was simply sitting there. He also showed no signs of coming out. Behind them, Yu Zifen was recovering, sitting in the air with his sword resting on his knees. His eyes were closed in meditation as he rapidly recovered his energy. Just now, he had used up all his energy to block Jai Wu Ming. All of them were nervous inside. If Yu Zifen hadn't been exhausted, with his unmatched sword Dao, even faith energy was nothing more than a transient cloud that could be easily pierced through. Other than Yu Zifen, the only one who could fight Jai Wu Ming was his fellow assassin Dong Minjiu. But Dong Minjiu didn't have faith energy. The only solace they found was in Dong Minjiu's unwavering indifference. She appeared completely unperturbed, as if everything unfolded precisely as she had foreseen, including the formidable faith domain that enveloped them all. I was waiting for this. My master told me that I was not permitted to kill you within my first three moves. I had to give you enough space to show off. She said that I had to kill you in your strongest state, or I'd be punished when I got back, said Don Mindyu lightly. Ah! Oh. Jai Wu Ming laughed furiously. Despite having subdued his rage, these audacious words were so arrogantly delivered that they carried a profound insult within them. Kill me in my strongest state. Are you trying to make me laugh to death? sneered Jai Wu Ming. Is it laughable? If I didn't agree to this, when you tried to attack Big Brother Long Chen, I could have killed you three times over. I was even hesitating over whether or not to abide by this agreement with my master. After all, the battlefield is no game. However, I still chose to listen to my master. I didn't know why she wanted to do this, but now I do. She wanted me to accumulate experience. It's all preparation for me to kill your master, in Puda, said Dong Minjiu. Nonsense, raged Jai Wu Ming. Even he could no longer remain cool in front of all these insults, so he charged at Dong Minjiu. His faith energy domain was like a sea crashing down on Dong Minjiu. The true clash of assassins started now. Chapter 3897 Silence of the Night Faith Energy covered the world, instantly devouring Dong Minjiu. At that moment, Dong Minjiu raised her dagger. To their astonishment, Jai Wu Ming's dagger materialized right before Dong Minjiu, 
despite him still standing in his original position. It was only when their daggers collided that Jai Wuming's figure revealed itself, appearing before Don Minju from nowhere. Time to main! An expert cried out in shock. Within the faith energy domain, Jai Wuming's time domain started to show its power. When he attacked, he was a hair faster than what people saw. In other words, there was a delay between his actions and what others actually saw, posing a lethal threat to an ordinary expert. It stood as an inviolable law, an unstoppable force beyond anyone's control. However, Dong Minju was somehow able to accurately stop an attack that surpassed time. You have two supreme bones capable of controlling time and space. But it's too bad that your control is merely superficial. The profundities of time and space are something that you cannot grasp. Did you think disturbing spatial and temporal fluctuations would count as full control? You're wrong. Time and space are relative concepts. It would work against laymen, but against assassins, with our sharp senses, we can grasp the changes to the flow of time and space. Thus, your time and space energy is useless against me. I can fully grasp the fluctuations of your control. If space-time is water, then I am a fish. If the water flows calmly, that's nice. If it starts growing chaotic, that's fine with me, too. I will simply adapt. Did you think you could use water to drown a fish? Asked Dong Minju indifferently. What nonsense. As long as the water current is chaotic enough, how will a little fish resist the flow? You will be crushed by the water pressure, retorted Jai Wuming darkly. That's correct. But with your crude control over space-time, you are unable to harm me. Since the quality is lacking, you are trying to use quantity to win. But that is a fantasy like a fish climbing a tree. Dong Minju shook her head. Cut the crap. We'll see the truth right now. Jai Wuming shouted furiously. All of a sudden, he vanished. Dong Minju only snorted in response. Without even looking back, Dong Minju swiftly altered her grip on the dagger, clutching it in a reversed position, and swiftly swung it backward. As a result, her dagger accurately and perfectly blocked Jai Wuming's ephemeral attack. The effortless manner in which she accomplished this left onlookers astounded. Jai Wuming's body flickered and vanished. He unleashed dozens of attacks in a row. However, Dong Midyu's body didn't even move. Like a beautiful dance, she blocked all of Jai Wuming's attacks with her dagger. The sound of daggers clashing was like a beautiful melody. But everyone knew that it was an overture of death where one mistake would be fatal. Dong Minju appeared graceful as her dagger danced around her. Her moves were all clearly seen by everyone. However, Jai Wuming was striking like lightning and retreating like a phantom, leaving behind countless afterimages. He was fierce and sharp. From a distance, it looked like a fairy was fighting an invisible devil. Every attack was fatally dangerous, causing the hearts of the spectators to race with intensity. It's already been eighty-one moves. My master shouldn't blame me if I kill you now. Don Minju's gaze suddenly turned cold. When she finally made her real move, an unknown black energy began to spread from her body. The next moment, Jai Wuming's dagger quivered as if drawn by some terrifying force. His dagger's immense power dissipated like a clay ox falling into the ocean, vanishing without a trace. At the same time, his body contorted as it was pulled by an unseen force. Without hesitation, he unleashed his spatial energy to flee. Even though he immediately retreated, he felt a sharp pain in his neck. He had been cut once again. Jai Wuming was shocked, but even more, he was incensed. This was his third time having his throat cut an absolutely unbearable humiliation to a peak assassin like him. However, before he could even do anything in his rage, Dong Minju's dagger fell on him again. Dagger images filled the sky, 
piercing toward him like a tempest. Jai Wuming hastily blocked, but Dong Minjiu's attacks were too fast. Some were fakes, while some were fatally powerful. There were several times that Jai Wuming was injured when he tried to block a fake. At this moment, there was no time for him to counterattack. He could only rely on his instincts to block and stay alive. In just a moment, he was covered in blood. However, it went without saying that Jai Wuming was powerful. Every time, he managed to avoid getting struck in a vital spot. Although he was repeatedly injured, they weren't serious injuries. Faith energy condensed into armor. An assassin wearing armor. Master is right. Your blood kill hall is a disgrace to the assassin world. The Nine Underworld Hall is much stronger than you, said Dong Minju coldly as she attacked. There were several times when Dong Minju's attacks almost left serious injuries, but an invisible armor would draw the dagger away from his vitals. Thus, Jai Wuming looked to be badly wounded, but those injuries were unable to pose any substantial damage to him. This invisible faith armor was his life-protecting trump card. Bullshit! Assassins are willing to use any means necessary for their goal, and the goal of an assassin can only be one thing. That is to eliminate their target. No matter how great your assassination arts are, if you can't kill your target, you are still nothing more than useless trash, shouted Jai Wuming furiously. Assassins are assassins, not rogues. If you are an assassin, you must have an assassin's professionality and integrity. Assassins must have their own rules and bottom lines, or they will be no more than coarse butchers. You have no faith, yet you gather faith energy. You are a conman. Your master in Puda is the greatest conman of all, tricking followers into giving him their faith energy to strengthen himself. While using rules to bind his followers, he follows no rules himself. He is shameless to the peak. That is why your master is called the base killing god, sneered Dong Minjiu. TCH, what do you know? What nonsense, raged Jai Wuming. He respected in Puta the most, and these insults were even more infuriating than when she insulted him. Nonsense? Aha, you must not know. My life was almost ruined by him, as the old me was one of his followers. I believed in that sanctimonious fellow and almost brought about my own demise. Fortunately, Big Brother Long Chen used his kindness to rouse me from his con. He opened a window for me that let me see the light. At that time, I swore to destroy the blood kill hall so that its poison would never harm anyone again. Today will be my first step. I'll use your head as a challenge to Impuda. Dong Minju's voice grew increasingly frigid, accompanied by a deepening density of her killing intent. Suddenly, she swiftly formed one-handed seals, an ominous sign of impending danger. Silence of the night. In an instant, this world became covered in darkness. Within this darkness, an eerie and absolute silence prevailed, stifling any semblance of sound. Chapter 3898 Fairies appear when the curtain of night descended. This world became covered in endless darkness. The night devoured every trace of light and sound. In an instant, a wave of terror surged through them. Within this enveloping darkness, they couldn't see or hear anything, making them feel like they were sinking into the depths of despair. Devoid of light and bereft of hope, they couldn't even sense their own existence, evoking primal panic that seized their very core. Fortunately, this dark world only appeared for an instant. People's vision quickly recovered as did their hearing. They then saw endless darkness flow by them toward Jai Wuming. As the dark domain crashed against Jai Wuming's faith domain, the milky white light was devoured by the darkness. The two domains then merged together. The dark was no longer pure dark, and the light was no longer pure light. Instead, it was a gray domain. This gray domain was like a solid barrier that others couldn't see through. Amidst the engulfing darkness, 
the only audible sounds were the clash of two divine weapons the reverberations of jai Wuming's furious roars and the chilling sound of a dagger slicing through flesh this giant gray domain materialized as a manifestation of the collision between dark energy and faith energy within its boundaries the sound would intermittently dissipate leaving an eerie silence that enveloped the world at times the darkness would obscure all visibility rendering everything shrouded in obscurity but people could see faint glimpses of two figures locked in a fierce clash what a terrifying dark domain when they were enveloped by that dark domain they felt like they had died that feeling of powerlessness and despair made them feel minuscule after the darkness passed them they felt like they had escaped death it was like they had already died and were revived it was something that they would never be able to forget in this lifetime peak assassins are truly terrifying in front of them all others are lambs for the slaughter with no power to resist sighed one city lord these divine venerates were all figures with status and prestige in the three thousand worlds they had lived for countless years experiencing countless battles however they had never seen such terrifying assassins originally they had been slumbering waiting for the eruption of the three thousand worlds by relying on the superiority of their cultivation bases they had been planning to crush the juniors which allowed them to absorb more primal chaos chi and fully merge their supreme blood and supreme bone then they would be true double supremes and dominate the three thousand worlds however now it seemed that they had been too naive in times of destiny great geniuses always rose as for them they were products of an abandoned era this eruption of the three thousand worlds was for the junior generation not for them for them to become double supremes was a million times more difficult as they had missed the best time to merge their supreme blood and supreme bone even if they did manage to merge them it still wouldn't be such a perfect merge like jai woomings in other words even if they became double supremes even if their realms were two major realms greater than these newcomers in terms of combat power they would still be a level lower this was fate and it could not be changed sometimes once you missed something it would never come back even if you fought for it with your very life some regrets could not be made up for they sighed over how powerful jai wuming was as well as how unfair life was if they were in the immortal king realm they would be born at the right time for the eruption of the primal chaos chi and soar above the nine heavens it should have been them hmph i refuse to believe in fate as long as you can grasp an opportunity anyone can become a peak expert do you know how many tens of thousands of years i've waited for this opportunity even if i die today i'll fight i would rather shatter as jade than live as some useless roof tile i would rather die in a blaze of glory than live a life of mediocrity what right does a little human have to touch the bloodline inheritance of the sacred dragon since the heavens have revealed the treasures they are up to everyone to fight for if you're afraid of death then crawl back into your turtle den i'm going forward shouted a demonic beast after saying that he actually charged at the dragon blood legion due to dong menju's appearance they had all stopped fighting however now more and more experts were drawn here all kinds of powers all kinds of heavenly geniuses and all kinds of old monsters were now present following that one roar countless people echoed his sentiment and charged as well they were like a tsunami crashing down upon the dragon blood legion from all directions these were all powerful experts either old monsters of the level of city lords or outstanding members of the junior generation most terrifying of all were the newcomers that had merged their supreme blood and supreme bone those who dared to charge over were all extremely confident in themselves 
they had immense power. As they unleashed their manifestations, a terrifying pressure emerged. Millions of experts crashed down like an avalanche. They were going to use all their power and break through the Dragon Blood Legion's defenses in the most direct and explosive manner. Not good. Our formation won't hold against such a charge. Kyuo Ran and Zaya Chen's expressions instantly changed. What they had been worried about had occurred. If so many attacks came at once, it would only be a simple clash of power against power. Now, the advantage they held in formation and strategy was rendered obsolete. There was no way to stop such an onslaught. Brothers, there's no other way. We can only risk our lives and protect Boss till the bitter end. Yua Ran clenched his teeth. Just as the old man said, in front of absolute power, all schemes were useless. In such a dire predicament, no amount of intelligence or strategy could provide any assistance. Heavenly Rainbow Dow Slash. Suddenly, a majestic and beautiful voice rang out. A seven-colored sword then descended from the heavens, splitting the world in two. Boo! This giant rainbow sword was like the blade of a heavenly god, blowing away countless life forms directly. The rainbow sword left a deep ditch in the earth. Within the crevice, vibrant rainbow flames blazed relentlessly, their intensity igniting the very heavens above. As the flames engulfed the surroundings, space itself contorted and twisted under their scorching influence. At this moment, a beautiful figure appeared. Clad in a long dress, her long black hair fell naturally past her shoulders. With a rainbow sword in her hand, she appeared akin to a celestial fire fairy descending from the heavens. The Pill Fairy! When they saw her, all the dragonblood warriors protecting Long Chen were filled with disbelief. They had personally witnessed the Pill Fairy dying in order to save Long Chen. Now that they saw her again, they couldn't believe their eyes. Earth Surge Golden Lotus. Before they could even exchange greetings with the Pill Fairy, Another resounding cry reverberated through the air. In an instant, the earth erupted, unleashing a dazzling display of golden divine radiance that illuminated the entire sky. Golden lotuses then burst forth from the ground, enveloping countless experts in their ethereal embrace. Countless powerful experts found their way blocked by those golden lotuses, so they began to attack them. However, in a sudden turn of events, the lotuses raised their stamens, unleashing a barrage of golden swords that pierced through the bodies of the hapless experts. Countless experts simply exploded upon contact with the golden swords. What terrifying metal energy! Gyuo Ran was stunned. Those golden swords easily pierced the protective divine light of even double supreme divine venerates. He had never seen such a terrifyingly sharp metal energy before. Following that, a grand woman in a golden dress, her hair elegantly styled in a high bun, descended from the heavens above. Her holy radiance illuminated this entire world, akin to a golden war goddess. May I ask who you? Guo Ran cupped his fists toward her. Suddenly, Guo Ran's vision flickered, and before him, Another person appeared. Startled, he jumped in shock, for this person had seemingly appeared out of nowhere without any prior indication. Guo Ran hadn't sensed him at all. Boss Guo Ran. You are definitely Boss Guo Ran, right? Asked this youngster standing in front of Guo Ran excitedly. Sial, you fool. Hurry up and help, shouted the woman covered in gold and divine radiance. Oh, I'm coming. After that, the youth rapidly formed hand seals. As three flower pupils appeared in his eyes, the world before him twisted. Get out of here! Heaven and earth contorted, causing the experts approaching from the opposite direction to vanish instantaneously. Seeing this scene, Guo Ran and Zaya Chen only stood in stunned silence, their jaws dropping in disbelief at the bewildering sight before them. 
Chapter 3899 Mysterious Staff The Pill Ferry intercepted the advancing force on one side, while the Golden War Goddess stood resolute, preventing their advance on the other side. In another direction, this juvenile-looking youth unleashed a single pupil art, causing all the experts in that vicinity to seemingly evaporate into thin air. The battlefield, once teeming with enemies, instantly felt emptier. Three people unleashed three attacks to stop the enemies on three sides. Although there was still a large group of experts that got through, the Dragonblood warriors were fearless. As long as those experts weren't concentrated together, it was manageable. However, despite the arrival of these three, the powerful experts were not dissuaded. Every time they looked at the dragon scale, their eyes reddened and they charged forward recklessly. The Dragon Blood Legion had to go all out to stop them. I am Gua Ran. Junior brother, you are. Asked Gua Ran. Ha ha, I'm Bai Sayol. This is my big sister Bai Shishi. We all follow boss Long Chen. Bai Zayol turned back to Guo Ran after using his pupil art. I follow myself. Don't spout nonsense. This woman was Bai Shishi. She had gone with Bai Zayol to a treasure land where Metal Kai gathered, and it was just what Bai Shishi needed. Originally, Bai Zayol was thinking of looking around more to see if there was a place more suitable for him to condense a heavenly Dao crown, but Bai Shishi wanted to go into seclusion, so he had to stand guard over her. After that, when the huge disturbance erupted, Bai Zayol used his three flower pupils to see what was going on there and immediately wanted to rush over. However, Bai Shishi was at a critical juncture, so he couldn't leave alone. When Bai Shishi finished, the two immediately charged over. They only coincidentally arrived, together with the pill fairy, to resolve the trouble. Bai Zayol stuck out his tongue. Ignore her. In any case, we're all on the same side. What is going on with boss? Bai Zayol waved his hand to Long Chen, who was encased in a dragon scale egg. Boss Long Chen is currently absorbing the true dragon runes inside the dragon scale. He has already finished the first, and there are seven more. We have to stand guard until he's done, said Guo Ran. Amidst the rumbling, Bai Shishi and the Pill Fairy began fighting off those countless experts. One was in control of the heavenly rainbow flame, and the other was in control of sharp metal energy. Neither of them was afraid of fighting groups. They had huge area of effect attacks that completely stopped their enemies, relieving the pressure on the Dragon Blood Legion. From their positions, they were affecting the entire battlefield. The ones who went past them also didn't dare to go all out for fear of those two collapsing on them. Then they would be pincered and truly doomed. With Yu Qingxuan and Bai Shishi joining in, the tempo of the battlefield slowed down. In this situation, the Dragonblood Legion's formation was extremely effective. Even with endless enemies, as long as they didn't concentrate all their attacks on the Dragonblood warriors at once, there was nothing to be afraid of. As the Dragonblood Legion unleashed their killing formation, a mesmerizing display of divine light danced around them. In the next instant, Sword Kai erupted like a tempest, accompanied by resounding dragon cries that reverberated through the battlefield. The Dragonblood warriors, fully harnessing the power of their dragon blood energy, experienced a profound resonance within their bloodlines, elevating their collective coordination to an unprecedented level. Over 2,700 dragon blood warriors were stopping an endless tide of experts on the level of city lords. The full might of all 2,700 of them merged perfectly, and after forcibly stopping the first wave, they took command of the tempo and counterattacked. Their slaughter formation was like saw blades for flesh. Countless experts were directly blasted apart by their brute power, and countless fragments of divine weapons flew through the air. However, those weapons belonged to both their enemies and the dragon blood warriors. After their weapons exploded, 
the dragonblood warriors switched to whatever weapon they could grab. Fuck if my brothers could use the divine weapons that I forged. These fellows would be worthless against them. Seeing the dragonblood warriors using random weapons, Guo Ran felt terrible inside. Some of the dragonblood warriors were using swords and sabers. However, some of those sabers were already broken, and some warriors were even more pitiful. One in particular was only using half a rounded mace as a weapon. Now, the Dragonblood Legion was like a group of impoverished bandits. They were using whatever they could get their hands on. Their weapons didn't suit them, causing their combat potential to be much lower than it could be. That made Gua Ran, as the general, feel extremely bad. Every single Dragonblood warrior was an elite trained through countless battles, the killing gods of the battlefield. Even in the immortal world where there were countless heavenly geniuses and supremes, their light was not covered. It didn't matter what opponent they faced. The dragonblood warriors were always the bravest, craziest wolves. They didn't know fear and never ran away from a fight. Even without suitable weapons, they still maintained their complete formation, crazily slaughtering their enemies. As a result, crimson blood rained down from the heavens. Luckily, without powerful weapons, they still had the powerful dragon blood battle armor which invoked a potent dragon blood domain. Within this domain, their power flowed easily as if an invisible dragon was swimming around them protectively. Even after fighting for so long instead of succumbing to fatigue, they only grew fiercer as if their power was inexhaustible gather up and kill those two women before charging again. Don't waste time with a battle of attrition. After seeing that they were unable to break through the Dragonblood Legion's formation, even after attacking for a long time, someone gave an order. The skilled experts could see that the Dragonblood Legion's formation could only be destroyed if they launched an instantaneous attack that overwhelmed them. Otherwise, they would just be sending themselves to their deaths. Just then, a huge group of powerful experts appeared in the distance, akin to a black cloud coming their way. There were hundreds of thousands of them. Those are. Xia Chen was surprised when he saw them. Those were the people that Bai Xiaol had made vanish. Sorry, I can't kill so many of them at once, so I can only use the spatial energy of my pupil art to transport them away. Furthermore, I can't send them too far. They've come back, said by Zyol apologetically. Pupil art. You know pupil arts? Eh, yeah, this thing is for you then. Yua Ran slapped his leg and suddenly took out a staff, handing it to by Zyol. Boss said that he was saving this for a brother who knew pupil arts. He must have meant you. This staff was none other than the artifact left behind by the heavenly eye elder. Prior to his departure, the elder had bestowed two invaluable treasures upon them, his six Dao heavenly eye and this remarkable staff. Bai Zyol reached out and touched it. The moment he did so, the entire staff transformed into runes, which then flowed and formed a spatial gate. As the spatial gate opened, a pair of giant eyes appeared within it. The moment those eyes manifested, an icy chill permeated the air, causing a bone-deep coldness that seemed capable of freezing one's very soul to appear. Rat, you wish to form a contract with me? As the master of those eyes spoke, its voice shook the nine heavens, changing the very color of the sky. Chapter 3900 Violet Pupil Nine Tail, Demon Fox, when those eyes appeared, Gua ran and the other's hair stood on end. Those were the eyes of the devil, filled with bloodthirst. It was like this life form only lived for slaughter. I, I, by Siol's jaw dropped. He had no idea what had just happened. Why are you wasting my time? If you want to form a contract, then bring out your spiritual seal. Fuck, I really regret fighting to get here first. I ended up running into a useless oaf. If you refuse to make a contract this time, 
you can just say that you give up. This contractual ceremony will then be abolished. A month later, you can restart it and will have another chance to make a contract, said the master of the eyes impatiently. I'm not prepared. I... Baizayel was quivering in fear in front of those eyes. He didn't even know what to say. Hurry and accept. Yuo Ran could see that this life form was regretting coming for Baizayel. It clearly wanted to leave, so Yuo Ran hastily urged Baizayel on. Shut your mouth. That life form unleashed a deafening roar, and its pupils contracted into minuscule dots. Hua Ran, at that moment, felt indescribable anguish, as if his very soul was on the verge of being torn apart. A terrifying presence descended upon him like an unstoppable tsunami, overwhelming him with its immense might. Boom! Suddenly, the sacred might of a dragon rippled outward, blasting back the life-form's power. It tore through the void inch by inch. A cham! That life-form seemed surprised. Only then did it take note of Long Chen, who was wrapped in a dragon scale. At this moment, Guo Ran was startled and enraged. Fortunately, Long Chen was right behind him, so this life form had disturbed the dragon scale, causing it to resolve its pressure on Guo Ran. Otherwise, he might be in a bad state right now. Courting death, are you? Disturb my boss and I'll kill you. But... Are you looking down on us? Since you've come, do you regret it? Zyol, form a contract with it. If it doesn't submit, boss will help you put it in its place, raged Yua Ran. All right, I'll form the contract. Bai Zyol nervously took out his spiritual seal. Brat, you won't regret it, demanded the life form coldly. I won't regret it. Bai Zyol clenched his teeth. He didn't know anything himself, but he trusted Long Chen and everyone beside him. That life form stared at Bai Zayol and then Long Chen, who was wrapped in a golden egg. In the end, it took out a rune and placed it on Bai Zayol's spiritual seal. But the moment the two seals met, the void began to shake. After that, the spatial gate slowly moved until it was behind Bai Zayol. Originally, Bai Zyol's manifestation had a pair of three flower patterns in it. That was a projection of his three flower pupils. In the midst of it all, the eyes within the spatial gate merged with the three flowers, transforming into a remarkable pair of double eyes. Both. When those two eyes merged, the spatial gate exploded and a towering figure tore out of the void, shaking the world with its wild aura. This creature was a terrifying embodiment of power. Resembling a fox, it possessed nine tails, each with its own colors, almost looking like the plumage of a peacock in full bloom. The desolate beast of the era of legends, the nine-tailed demon fox. When this life form revealed itself, a city lord cried out in horror. Its pupils, they are violet. It can't be. The legendary emperor of the nine-tailed demon foxes, the violet-pupiled nine-tailed demon fox. So the legends of that era are true. There really is such an existence, a voice quivered. The crowd stood in disbelief, their eyes wide with trepidation, as the existence they had only heard of in ancient tales revealed itself before their eyes. The era of legends was a vague time. All kinds of stories and paintings from that era were handed down through generations, attempting to capture its essence. However, they remained fragments of the past, lacking clarity and definitive origins, making it challenging to trace their true roots. Like whispers in the wind, the tales of that era carried an air of uncertainty, leaving gaps in the understanding of history. Even though the skepticism lingered, the allure of stories persisted among the people. The divine beasts depicted within those tales, in particular, inspired vivid imaginations, leading to the creation of vibrant images. Hence, the sudden manifestation of an actual violet pupil nine-tailed demon fox held a profound visual impact, leaving countless individuals captivated by it. 
if the violet pupil nine tail demon fox truly existed then didn't it mean that many other legends could appear in this world at any moment a desolate kais world around it causing countless experts to feel like their hearts would explode this was a beast that had walked out of the era of legends it was terrifying brat i have formed a contract with you but if you're too weak this would be blasphemy to my violet pupil nine tail race according to our contract i can kill you to escape the bindings that hold us together said the violet i nine tail demon fox its voice icy cold without any emotion however when it looked through the battlefield its violet pupils emitted a demonic light it was like a beast eyeing endless prey i by Sayol was still horrified by what he had summoned so he didn't even know what to say he had never imagined that he would gain such a terrifying contractual divine beast fox so weak what can i do in this state the violet pupil nine-tail demon fox looked down at the little fellow in front of him a bit irritably use your pupil art and the mnemonic i gave you to merge your power with mine let me see what kind of level we can reach when our powers merge oh only then did baizaiol form hen seals as divine light flowed in his eyes the void shuddered after that the violet pupil nine-tailed demon foxy's enormous figure rapidly shrank until it was only three hundred meters tall what is this the violet i nine-tailed demon fox seemed enraged as if it was going to explode it glared at baizaiol in such a manner that baizaiol thought it was going to eat him what 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 do you mean what is this stuttered baizaiol in terror how can our merged power be so weak it's not even a thousandth of what mine was how can you be so weak roared the violet pupil nine tail demon fox a wild kai wave then blasted away by Zyol. when others merged with me the result was far beyond one plus one as for you rather than increasing my power you've only weakened me what is the point of this by Zyol was shaken by this roar his mind crumbling as a result he could only stare in terror at the violet pupil nine-tailed demon fox and had no idea what to say brother calm yourself i follow my boss and i'll grow quickly give me some time please i'm weak now but i'll get stronger said by Zyol while trembling with fear many people thought that such gutless words would cause the violet pupil nine tailed demon fox to be further enraged but unexpectedly it looked toward long chen and suppressed its anger merge with my spiritual body I want to test your pupil arts. All right. As Bai Zyol's hand seals changed, he vanished, reappearing on the violet pupil nine tail demon fox's head. After that, the aura of fox and man became one. Boom! The violet pupil nine tail demon fox's body suddenly vanished. It reappeared on the battlefield, unleashing a sharp claw that tore through the void.